गुड इवनिंग बॉन्जो वनकम वेलकम नमस्कार हाउ इज एवरी वन हाउ आर ऑल द मिलियंस वेलकम टू दिस नेक्स्ट सेशन द मोस्ट अमेजिंग सेशन फॉर रिवाइजिंग ऑल द लेवन स्टैंडर्ड पोर्शन विद मी श्रेयस योर मास्टर टीचर फॉर फिजिक्स एट वेदांतु गोइंग लाइव वेलकम ऑल द मिलियंस नाइस टू सी एवरी वन आउट यर हेलो यार दी मिलियन आरती अंकित साइंस प्रिया welcome aishwarya hello vatsalya hello everyone and all the new members who are here remember the only way i would know you are here the only way other minions would know you are here is only when you interact in the chat box make new friends trust me we are a wonderful family we help each other we support each other and we block all the spammers and we do not tolerate abuses and we make sure that the virus stays away yes welcome hello surya hello everyone hello harsha hello saideep and it's i think uh, science priya's birthday hello well many many happy returns of the day science priya all the best may this year bring lot of joy in your life and guys if it's your birthday you should definitely attend because you are going to get lots of wishes from all the we enthusiasts out here all right so let's begin with our session thank you purvank hello harsha welcome welcome yes your capto is here your capto is here and those of you who have not yet followed me on instagram come on do it shreyas underscore vedantu that's my instagram handle and guys i'm here to make sure that you crack the je examination while you have fun while you learn all the different concepts tricks all the shortcuts and also the methods of solving so many variety of problems we have completed just like i promised you almost all the syllabus which is required basically for 11th as well as 12th almost 99% of the syllabus is over on this channel of physics so if you are new you can watch any of the videos for free of cost so do not forget to hit the subscribe button down there yes go hit the subscribe button because you're going to get more videos in the coming few weeks for tips strategy previous year papers advanced question paper discussions in fact next week when the mains examination is going to happen we are going to discuss the complete paper of each and every shift on this channel so do not forget to hit the subscribe button down there and to show your support to show your love do not forget to smash that like button down there come on do it if you have not done it yet hello welcome 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 let's begin hello manzoor ilak welcome hello anish k hi princey Hello again then yes welcome hi kishor welcome 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 let's begin with our session and um in case you have missed any of these sessions please do not forget you can watch all of these sessions in the playlist most important problems of 11th and 12th standard were conducted on tuesday and wednesday do check it out in the playlist also today we are revising all the important definitions formulas concepts of 11th standard tomorrow a very similar session for 12th standard this session is mandatory for both 11th and 12th students and also dropper obviously and this session is mandatory for the dropper and the 12th students the 12th standard portion saturday 20 most important questions or a mock test is going to come up so stay tuned for saturday as well so let's begin with our session so let's get ready i hope you have your notebooks out with your pens all ready geared up I hope you all are warmed up and uh, yes ready to begin uh, yeah this amazing session well raga party means party in that fake english accent <laughs> all right so let's begin so you should definitely check out raga all the other amazing videos which have gone viral on the internet it's taken the internet by storm yeah let the party begin let the party begin yeah let's party guys let's party All right, but for now, we'll do thayari. Thayari will happen after our thayari. All right, guys, let's do this. Okay, so there we go. Now talking about vector addition and subtraction. Yes, 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 students, welcome, welcome, welcome. So just one up. We are going to do all the chapters today, right from vectors, thermodynamics, SHM, fluids. waves sound mechanics rotation all chapters will be done in today's marathon session so gear up you have to gear up because you need lot of energy for this session lot of 
Yes, willingness, mind power is needed. So let's do this. Stay till the end now. Now for vector addition, remember there are two rules or two ways of adding vectors. One is the triangle law. So let's say for example, you have a vector A over here and vector B over here. You can join them tail head, tail head like this or you can join their tails together, doesn't matter. So you can slide this B vector over here. This then becomes the parallelogram law. So in a triangle law, you just draw the missing side. That is basically your A vector plus B vector, which I call it, let's say C. Here you complete that parallelogram and we all know that gives me the vector A bar plus B bar, which is C bar. It's one and the same thing if you notice. And the magnitude of this C vector, all right, the magnitude of this C vector is given by root of A square plus B square plus 2AB cos of theta. So what is theta? Theta is nothing but the angle between A and B. Yes, the angle between A and B. All right. Now keep this in mind. The angle between two vectors is not this angle because their heads and tails are not together. See, both heads or both tails should be together. Only then you can measure the angle. So how do you measure the angle? Shift one of those vectors and so that all their tails match and only when their tails match or their heads match, only then measure the angle. That's the definition of measuring the angle. So this video, Ashu, Shreya, this is going to be at least two hours. So two hours. So block your time till nine o'clock because come on guys, entire 11 standard portion. Do you expect me to do it within five, 10 minutes? Not possible, right? So stay tuned. This is going to help you for your J mains preparation and you will replay this lecture n number of times, 100 times probably, because this is going to be a game changer in your life. Yes, similarly, similarly, if you do want to do vector subtraction, the first thing you need to do is negate one of that vectors, let's say B vector, then understand using again triangle law, this one over here will be A vector minus B vector. Let's say I call it D vector. So A minus B, is adding A to negative of B vector. You can use either triangle rule or even parallelogram rule. There is no hard and fast rule about that. So again, let's say this is A vector. This is negative of B vector. Then yes, you have this one out here. This is A vector minus B vector, which is D vector. Now keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. Actual B vector would have been here, just like it is shown over here. And this would be the angle, right? the magnitude of the difference, the magnitude of the difference of the two vectors will be very similar. It will be a square plus b square minus 2ab cos of theta. Keep this in mind. So that is the formula that you will use for vector subtraction. Now, where do you use vector addition? Where do you use vector subtraction? Note this down. Where and all are you going to use vector addition? For finding resultant, for finding net, to find the sum of vectors in general, all right? So this is where you are going to use, uh, you know, addition of vectors. You want to find the net force. You want to find the total momentum. You want to find a net electric field. You want to find a total uh, magnetic field. All these are vector quantities. So vector quantities need to be added using these rules. Where will you use this vector subtraction? You will use vector subtraction in relative motion, relative motion or remember relative motion it's always one with respect to two velocity of one minus velocity of two what is velocity vector so use vector subtraction also use it whenever you have to find the change in vector quantity for example for example if i tell you guys there is a car which is traveling with a constant speed and it is turning a car which is traveling with a constant speed and it is turning what do you think guys is this car's velocity changing or not changing? Come on guys, is this car's velocity changing or not changing? If it is going with constant speed, but the direction is changing, yes or no? Come on guys, let me know. Hi Jagdish, hi Naveen, hi Priyanka. Welcome, good evening. Yes, yes, real says student, very good. All right, so is the car's velocity changing or not changing? Come on guys, yes, very good. Why is it changing? Minyan Arti says yes because the direction is changing and whenever you have to find the change in velocity, change in acceleration, change in momentum, 
or change in any vector quantity use vector subtraction but if the question was change in speed what is speed scalar S speed is scalar so when you are you have to find change in a scalar quantity you don't have to use these rules you can just find the difference normal magnitudes difference if the speed was 10 meters per second later on also if the speed is 10 meters per second the change in the speed is zero but change in velocity is not zero keep this in mind so just when this session is going to be for around two hours so block your time at least till nine o'clock it might extend even more okay so this is the result and that's how you find it i just spoke about it now talking about vector multiplication and vector sub, uh, product and all these things so before that remember just like you have the unit vectors along the x y and z direction okay so unit vector in x is i hat unit vector in y is j hat and unit vector in uh, z is k hat keep this in mind if there is some vector let's say some random vector over here okay this is let's say a vector okay there is some random vector a in some 3d space or 2d space then the unit vector the unit vector in the direction of a is represented as a hat what is the unit vector in the direction of a represented as a hat so what does it mean it's one unit in that direction so what is the formula for a hat that is a vector divided by the magnitude of a that means for example just to give an example because we are also going to practice concepts over here so say for example a vector is let's say uh, 6 i cap plus 8 j cap just example then a hat will be this whole thing which is 6 i cap plus 8 j cap divided by magnitude of the vector a what is the magnitude of vector a think about it what is the magnitude 6 square plus 8 square 6 square plus 8 square is 100 which is root of 100 is nothing but 10 so here you will get 10 and this will be 0.6 i plus 0.8 j so what it means is if you go 0.6 in i cap and 0.8 in j cap you would travel exactly one unit in a's direction that's the meaning of a hat yes i hope this is clear yes so vh gaming till nine o'clock at least Ramini, you're a little bit late. Probably you can just go back a little bit and rewind and catch up at 2x speed. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Yes. Yes, Vislam. This session is also going to be long because I'm going to make sure that you get all the concepts which are important for the upcoming J mains. And even if you're a 2022 aspirant, this session is mandatory for you because you're going to use this session many number of times. Is this clear? That's the unit vector, guys. Okay. Then also talking about dot product and vector product so two pro uh, two vectors can be multiplied and if there is a dot symbol that's a dot product or a scalar product and remember the value is a b cos theta and you can use this to find where and all do you use this dot product to uh, to find angle yes to find angle if there are two vectors given and you want to find the angle between them use this formula cos theta is a dot b divided by a b use this formula guys because remember you cannot visualize every time you cannot use geometry every time this is one of the best ways to find the angle between two vectors keep this in mind hello kirito welcome join in i guess you're logged in from some different account ashu will be covering all the chapters of 11th standard yes very good Shreya is for je 2022 welcome very good very good all the 2022 2021 aspirants welcome out here and another application of dot product what is it used for perpendicularity test to check if two vectors are perpendicular the moment you hear the word perpendicular and you know vectors are involved probably one of the things that should run in your mind is the dot product and you should always think about you should always think about all right taking the dot product and making it zero because cos 90 is zero the dot product will always be zero so these are some of the applications apart from finding quantities like work work power etc in fact you will learn later on flux all these things are based on dot product work is f dot s power is force dot velocity flux is field dot area 
So that's how it works. So it is used for all these quantities. I hope this is clear. I hope you guys are also making notes. I hope you guys are enjoying this session. I hope I'm doing everything that is needed for your 2021 and 2022 preparation. Okay, I'm going to erase all this. Beware. All right, there you go. Next thing that you need to keep in mind. Next thing that you keep, need to keep in mind is the cross product, a cross product or vector product. So if I do A cross B, all right, it will be nothing but A B sine of theta and N hat. This N hat is given by right hand thumb rule. Keep this in mind, right hand thumb rule. So always your fingers, all right, if these are your fingers, this is your thumb. I hope I have drawn our hand really nicely. So first it should point towards A and then you should bend your fingers. It should go towards B. Then this will be the direction of N hat. The thumbs direction will always be in N hat. All right, keep this in mind. Now, where and all will you use cross product? Well, cross product can be used to find quantities like torque and sometimes in electromagnetism and so many other examples wherever cross product will be required. Even in angular momentum, angular momentum, so many other places where you will see cross product. So torque is R cross F. In electromagnetism, the force is Q V cross B. So for 11 students, probably you have not heard of this. Ignore, it's okay. And angular momentum is R cross, all right, P. So these are some of the examples where you will use vector product. That's very important. Yes, even in angular velocity and all that. Correcto, very good, very good, Anket, excellent. Yes, NVD, this is a marathon session. Yes, correcto. Now, what is RHTR, Sugandhan? That is right hand thumb rule. So place your fingers in direction of A, curl it towards B, your thumb points in the direction of A cross B. That's what it is. Yes, I hope this is clear. Hi, Sri Ram, welcome. Yes, all right. Now, having said this, let me also tell you one important thing to check if two vectors, sorry, three vectors are coplanar. To check if two or three vectors are coplanar, what you need to do, take their cross product and their cross product's value, take a dot with another vector. That if it is zero, then they are said to be coplanar. So this is called a scalar triple product. Don't have to worry about the name. But if you take cross and a dot, and if it comes out to be zero, then all the three vectors are in the same plane. Very, very useful formula. Very, very useful formula can be used sometimes in some situations. I'll give you one example. There was a question in J, and I think even in bits, and they give a question on optics. This was the incident ray. This was the reflected ray and this was the normal on that surface. All right, this was the normal vector. And then they had given some options and guess what? The correct option was I cross R dot N was zero because this is a scalar triple product. And guess what? All the three vectors are in the same plane. And those of you who had studied, those of them who had studied under me, they immediately marked the answer because they knew. Shreya sir had taught us in the class scalar triple product. If it is zero, it is coplanar. And we all know incident, reflected and normal ray are in the same plane. That's it. Yes, that's how it is. Okay, very good. So keep all these things in mind. And last thing that I would like to tell you here is for cross product I, J, K. All right. Remember this simple rule. If you go clockwise, it is positive. And if you go anti-clockwise, it is negative. That means I cross J is K. J cross K is I. K cross I is J. So you don't have to turn your fingers, thumb, etc. to figure out, oh my God, what the hell is K cross I? Oh, K cross I, I know it is J. If somebody asks you J cross I, okay, J cross I will be minus K. That's how it is. Cool? Yes, very good, very good, excellent, excellent. Let's get going, guys. Let's get going. I hope all those new members out here have already hit the like button and the subscribe button. In case you haven't, please do it right now because, guys, I need your support, your love for conducting this session more than water or food. Trust me. Hello, Tanya. Hello, Frederick. Welcome, welcome. Wow, nice to see 
A love from Kerala too. Hi Nandana, welcome. Yes, let's get to kinematic equations and properties. Oops, wait. Yeah, now everybody knows the equations of kinematics, but let me talk about it graphically first. So if you have velocity and if you have time, all right, then the graph of velocity versus time looks like this. This is initial velocity. This is slope and keep this in mind. Since it's a straight line, the equation of a straight line should be of the form y is mx plus c. So what is y over here? Think about it. What is y over here? y over here is velocity. What is m? The slope. And what is the slope? It is acceleration. Slope of velocity with time. How fast is velocity changing? That's acceleration. So a and oops, there was an x here, my bad, mx plus c. Yeah. And x over here is t and constant over here is nothing but initial velocity. So that's your first kinematic equation graphically. Slope of velocity time is acceleration. The constant in that equation is your initial velocity. When time is zero, what was your initial velocity? All right, minions, I hope you guys are seeing this. All right. So Pramesh, you should give at least 10 to 20 mock tests, I feel, before your final examination and that's why we are conducting so many mock tests out here so that you get enough practice now just giving mock tests is not sufficient you should also attend discussions because you will see how teachers are solving that's why i'm doing taking so much of pain for you guys sitting over here solving selecting problems and discussing them live out here all right now the next is obviously the area the area under these graphs is going to be displacement and that is ut plus half a t square which is the area of that graph and then you have the third equation now a lot of people do not know the third equation completely let me tell you but if you have attended my classes of kinematics you know it yes that is u square plus 2 a vector dot s vector keep this in mind so this is the trick which i gave you in my kinematics also you can use the third kinematic equation even for 2d or 3d motion as long as acceleration is constant. Keep this in mind, all these rules are valid only if acceleration is constant. Otherwise it is not valid, isn't that right? So keep this in mind, you can use dot product even if acceleration and displacement are somewhere else. Keep this in mind. Don't worry stress sir, student, I'm here, I'm here. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm here, that's why I'm revising everything out here. I'm going to make sure I revise lot of formulas, concepts, I will teach you properly and we are also going to be conducting special sessions for uh, relieving your stress, etc. That's why I am, uh, you know, making sure you guys stay motivated and discussing everything. Don't worry, we are there with you. All right. Hello, the guardian. Welcome. Very good, Pramesh. Very good. All right. So both, so we are, both are important. Mock test as well as PYQ. Last equation, displacement in n second. So if I tell you displacement in 4.8 second, what does it mean displacement in 4.8 second? It means displacement from t is equal to 3.8 to t is equal to 4.8. How much did you move? So the, in the previous one second, how much did you move? And the formula for the displacement in n second is u plus acceleration by 2 into 2n minus 1. Keep this in mind. This is the formula. Yes, very good. Very good. Yes, NVD, we are going to come to heat everything. Patience, my dear students. Everything we are going to come to it. Don't worry. So, next step, integration and derivatives. So, talking about position, velocity, velocity to acceleration, acceleration to velocity, velocity to position. So, keep all these things in mind. Now, most of you probably know about this, but still, velocity is derivative of position so it is nothing but slope of x versus time graph that is what velocity is what is acceleration acceleration is derivative of velocity and it is nothing but slope of velocity versus time graph correct similarly if you want to go from velocity to position understand x is integral of velocity with respect to time if you do not put limits, you have to put and uh, yes, you need to put a constant out there. Now, be careful. The area, this many people make a mistake. So keep this in mind. 
एरिया अंडर वेलोसिटी वर्सेस टाइम डज नॉट गिव यू पोजिशन प्लीज कीप दिस इन माइंड वॉट डज इट गिव यू इट गिव यू चेंज इन पोजिशन विच इज नथिंग बट डिस्प्लेसमेंट कीप दिस इन माइंड एरिया ऑलवेज गिव यू चेंज इन द पोजिशन सिमिलरली वेन यू गो फ्रॉम एक्सेलरेशन टू वेलॉसिटी वेलॉसिटी इज अगेन इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ एक्सेलरेशन प्लस सम कॉन्स्टेंट सो द एरिया अंडर ऑल राइट एरिया अंडर एक्सेलरेशन वर्सेस टाइम इट डज नॉट गिव यू वेलॉसिटी प्लीज कीप दिस इन माइंड वॉट डज इट गिव यू चेंज इन द वेलॉसिटी सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट लॉट ऑफ पीपल मेक मिस्टेक्स ऑल राइट नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट यू नीड टू कीप दिस इन माइंड डोंट वरी सकते even if i late uh, just replay yes very good ramini has done that so sakti just like ramini did it just catch up at 2x speed uh, just replay back whatever you have missed all right one more thing that i would love to tell you guys is this particular formula all right since acceleration is dv by dt you can sometimes use chain rule chain rule is something like this dv by dx into dx by dt and this dv by dx keep it as it is this dx by dt is velocity so it will become dv by dx into v so you can see dx dx cancels anyways this is called chain rule and this can be sometimes useful when time is not there in the answer so use this chain rule certain times which is very very useful okay i hope this is clear yes so going to projectile motion equations certain things which are supposed to be kept in mind tell me minions is the velocity zero at highest point is the total velocity zero at highest point come on think about it ramlingam at least your performance will be boosted by at least 10 marks trust me 10 to 15 marks minimum i'm telling ramlingam kishore no it is not zero only one thing is zero what is zero the y velocity is zero okay in projectile motion which velocity remains constant y velocity or x velocity which velocity remains constant come on minions tell me which velocity remains constant very good radhika very good nvd very good jasm manak very good krito very good minion arti diya very good prince yalni ramini very good yes harsh yes ramlingam x velocity only remains constant correct correct only x velocity remains constant correct and similarly if you throw a ball from a cliff you are on a cliff and you throw the ball horizontally correct so the path that it takes is also a parabola it's like half the motion of this projectile motion it's like somebody just missed this part or erased this part and if you look at this part it exactly looks like that so if you throw a ball from the top it looks as if it's half of the projectile so all the formulas in one slide coming up on your screens right away time of flight come on note it down or try to write it 100 times 10 times come on write it down 2u sin theta yg 2u sin theta yg u sin theta yg for going up u sin theta yg for coming down time to go up time to come down is same keep this in mind very good now similarly maximum height u square sin square theta by 2g u square sin square theta by 2g rock it has started some 15 minutes back or something you can rewind back catch up at 2x speed or 3x speed okay do that equation of motion x tan theta minus x square by g oh, sorry x square g by 2 u square cos square theta very important equation trajectory equation x tan theta minus half g x square by u square cos square theta and range how can we forget 2 u square sin theta cos theta by g which is same as u square sin 2 theta by g using the trigonometric identity keep this in mind very good very good pramesh keep this up minions i want even more students live get your friends we have to get this platform to a much higher level please understand the only reason i am here is only because of your love your support your comments your feedback and all those things that you write about me trust me guys there is no other reason for me to come over here you have to grow this we and thews family you have to follow me you have to support your stress sir out here very good so next up coming up on your screen time of flight for this on a cliff you are on a tower and you are throwing something you are on a tower and you are throwing something the time of flight is root 2 h by g now very important thing to note 
This time of flight formula root 2h by g is same as the time of flight of formula for a stone which is dropped. And this kind of question is also there in H.C. Verma. Uh, there is a person who fires the bullet and another person who drops that bullet. Which bullet will fall on the ground faster? The answer is both will come on the ground at the same time. At the same time. Correct. -o. Why? Because understand when you throw it horizontally, there is no y velocity. And when you drop it, that time also there is no y velocity. So don't you see that both of them will come down with the same acceleration downwards in the same time. So you can see the formula is the same. Velocity of impact, very interesting. Root of 2gh plus u square. There are two components. Why? One is vertical component, which is root 2gh. Yes, root 2gh vertical component. U is the horizontal component. So the vector sum of u and root 2gh, you're going to get this as velocity of impact and the range is the time, you can see the time, into the speed. So the time for which it falls into the horizontal speed. So horizontal speed is u. So horizontal speed into time will give me the range. Keep this in mind. Very good, very good. Thank you, Shreya sir, students, Ms. Pathak, English, English, Pranita, Aishwarya, Minyan, Arthi, Abhishek, Diya. Thank you, Deen, Nandana, Abhishek. Very good, very good. Now, the most dreaded formula, guys. Inclined plane. I'm pretty sure many people do not remember or know this. Shall I teach you a trick? Shall I teach you a trick of remembering the formulas? After this, you'll be like, why did you not tell this before? I'm going to show that to you. Come on, let's do this. So, first of all, remember certain things. Let's remember certain things. First, alpha. What is alpha? Alpha is angle of inclination of that plane. What is it? Angle of inclination of the plane. What is theta? Theta is the angle of projection, not with the incline, not with the incline, with the horizontal. Keep this in mind. So the actual angle with respect to the incline, actual angle with respect to the incline is theta minus alpha, only this much. This much angle is theta minus alpha. Keep this in mind. Now, now, oh my God. Now look at this guys, what is going to happen? Let me tell you one very interesting fact about inclined plane projectile. Realize this, inclined plane projectile is a complete projectile which has been stopped somewhere in between. If somebody did not put this inclined plane, trust me, this trajectory would have continued and it would have fallen. So just because somebody cut it off, the trajectory could not be completed. That's it. So it is still nothing but your normal projectile motion only. So. Let's see what the formula should look like. Let's see what the formula should look like. Time of flight. What is our usual formula? What is our usual formula? It is 2u sin theta by g. Correct? That is our usual formula. But here in inclined plane, do you see the angle is no longer theta. It is theta minus alpha with the plane. With the plane, it is theta minus alpha. So instead of theta, put theta minus alpha. And let me tell you, usually G is like this. Now, if you split the G, and if this is alpha, isn't this G cos alpha? And this is G sin alpha, think about it. Now, just look at this diagram with your head tilted, with your head tilted, like this. Won't you see, this is actually your normal projectile, but the gravity which is down like this is G cos alpha. Do you see that? Just tilt your head, it looks like a normal projectile and I have projected it at theta minus alpha and the gravity is g cos alpha, so just put g cos alpha over here. That's it, that's it. Yes, very good, very, very important. Wow, Sakti, my God, 10x speed, you are really super fast, huh? <laughs> okay, definitely, Shreya says, students, someday we are going to party after you guys do your thayari, trust me, okay. Now, range formula, range formula, what is the range formula? It is usually 2u square sine theta cos theta divided by g, that's it, isn't it? Now, I'll tell you what change happens. Both thetas do not change, that's something you should keep in mind. Just make sine theta minus alpha, that's it, do not change this. And instead of cos alpha over here, it's cos square alpha. Think this way. If there is u, it's cos. 
If there is u square, there is cos square. That's it. Done, done, done. That's the formula. That's the formula. Correct. This is done. That's the formula, guys. I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. Cool? Yes. Yes. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Clearing up. So, this is the formula for range and time of flight, which you should know. And believe me, the formula for down the plane is also similar. The only difference is when you are coming down the plane and if this is alpha, please understand this is theta. So the time of flight formula, which was 2u sine theta minus alpha by g cos alpha and the range formula, which was 2u square sine theta minus alpha cos theta divided by g cos square alpha. The only changes notice if this is alpha, this is alpha. The total angle is theta plus alpha. So the only change is instead of minus, it becomes plus. That's it. So it just becomes plus. That's the only change. Is that clear? Yes. I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. Very good. Very good. Very good. Yes. Let's do this. Okay. Yes. Yes, Mr. Stark, we are going to revise the entire 11th standard syllabus. This lecture, keep in mind, is for both 11th and 12th standard students. By the way, I have a special surprise for you. We are also going to solve previous year questions along with this. I hope you have your energy pumped up for this. Now, now, relative motion. Yes, VA, VB, two cars, two bikes, two any donkeys, monkeys going anywhere, doesn't matter. Relative velocity of A with respect to B. A with respect to B is A minus B. V A minus V B. Velocity of B with respect to A is V B minus V A. Should I use this only in 1D? No. Can I use it in 2D? Yes. Can I use it in 3D? Yes. So what is the thing that I need to keep in mind? It is vector subtraction. That's all. That's vector subtraction. Yes. So keep this in mind. This is always vector subtraction. Now, Please understand this, understand this, even if there is a car going like this, all right, and there is another car going maybe like this, let's say this is VA and this is VB, then velocity of B with respect to A, B with respect to A is VB minus VA. So minus VA, do you see that? You have to negate VA. So negate VA, so this will be minus VA and that's about it. This would be the relative velocity of B with respect to A. That's how it works. So you can use this even for 2D and 3D problems. Very, very important. Many times relative motion is going to help you. Shortest distance of approach, farthest distance of approach, relative motion, time taken to catch something, time taken to overtake. So all these problems involve relative motion. Keep this in mind. Time taken to catch generally, okay? Time taken to catch, time taken to overtake, time taken to meet, time taken for closest approach, time taken for farthest approach, smallest distance of approach. All right, these kind of questions are generally based on relative motion. Keep this in mind. Just one, I'm also going to give you the session PDF. Don't worry. Yes. Now, now, for Rain Man problems, Rain Man problems, remember one equation, simple equation, and I'll tell you what that equation is. Velocity of rain with respect to man is Vr minus Vm. That's it. Man is going somewhere. Rain is falling somewhere. This is velocity of rain. This is velocity of man. Using this equation, Vrm, Vr minus Vm. Whose velocity are you going to subtract? Man's velocity. So draw minus Vm vector. And that's it. This is Vr. This is minus Vm. Forget Vm. And that's it. You're going to get Vrm. That's going to help you solve the problems. Keep this in mind. Okay, next up, crossing the river, crossing the river. This is a river of width D, all right? This is a river uh, of width D. So the angle track track will be given to you or you will have to find it out by geometry, either one of them. Okay, cool. Next up, see, what is each of these quantities? Keep this in mind. Okay, so what is each of these quantities? This U is the velocity of the swimmer. This u is the velocity of the swimmer. This w is the velocity of river. All right. And this v is the net velocity or I can say 
resultant velocity the resultant velocity so the swimmer's velocity plus the reverse velocity gives you the total velocity so very important equation the total velocity is a swimmer's velocity in still water plus the water velocity or the river velocity that will give the resultant keep this in mind now if i tell you okay one sec if this is point a this is point b and 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 i want to reach point b so basically if understand if you want to cross it via shortest shortest distance then you will try to swim at such an angle that the reverse velocity is going to pull you such that your net velocity is going to be vertical this is how it's going to look like so you're going to swim backwards like this at an angle such that your resultant velocity will be straight so you're cancelling out or balancing reverse velocity that's for shortest distance similarly for shortest for shortest time keep this in mind that you are always going to swim perpendicular to the flow the river will take you here your net velocity might be somewhere like this that's okay but you will use complete velocity in crossing the river so this is going to be for shortest time very important stuff keep this in mind yes now now another very important trick which nobody tells you very important trick keep this in mind guys the time taken to cross very important does not does not depend on w which is river velocity no matter how fast or how small the river velocity is if your angle of swimming and speed of swimming is fixed that's it the time taken to cross is always the same keep this in mind keep this in mind yes very very important and i have shown this to you in simulation when i taught in my regular sessions so you can watch our playlist let's do this i hope you minions can do this really quick this was 2005 previous year question let's see how many of you get this really quick come on let's see which minion is going to get this answer really quick come on come on come on waiting for all the uh, we enthusiasts out here ankit says c okay i don't know let's see let's see let's see come on ankit has said c come on guys come on come on let's see who and all are going to get this correct abhishek has said c okay cool 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 okay jaswant also saying c ramesh ready saying c all right cool priyanka also saying c nikhil also saying c oh my god rocky saying s i r okay well that's not an option rocky <laughs> come on come on come on yes very good minions you know what i will do in the actual exam you know what i will do in the actual exam i won't even calculate this value yeah i'm not going to calculate this value you know what i'm going to do the particle is moving towards east correct this is initial velocity then it turns and changes to north this is final velocity what do we need to find acceleration what is acceleration change in velocity by time so basically you need change in velocity's direction and what is change in velocity it is final minus initial so this is final negative of initial won't it be here this will be minus vi this is final this is minus vi so the resultant will be somewhere here this is your delta v and which direction is it in if this is north this is east this is west this is south don't you see it is in northwest direction there is only one option with northwest i won't even check the value i will just mark it be confident don't be a fool to uh, or don't think no 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 i need to check this no don't do that don't waste your time directly mark and go ahead it's only a fool's job to actually check the value because you know it has to be correct yes very good yes he is the first minion ankit very good all right direction based question correct to kaise aaya samajh mein aaya just manak i hope this is clear okay cool let's get going to the next question and that answer was c let's that's what you got so 2007 question let's see how many of you get this velocity of a particle is so 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 position is zero at t zero 
the displacement after one second. Let's see how many of you get this. Let's see how many of you get this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ankit says A, okay. I don't know. Crystal clear. Very good, Princey. NVD says C. Oh my God. Mr. Uwe says A. I don't know. Okay, okay. Teacher Tanya also says A. All right. I'll start solving. Let's see. How many of you get this correct? Velocity to displacement. I just gave you a graph. I just gave you a graph. So guys, X is nothing but integration of velocity with respect to time. So plus C. Okay. So X will be equal to all right, integration of this V naught integration DT plus G integration T DT plus uh, what is it? F integration T square DT plus C. So X is equal to V naught T plus G T square by 2. T's integral is T square by 2 plus F T square's integral is T cube by 3 plus C. It is clearly mentioned. When x is 0, t is 0. So just substitute that. When x is 0, time is 0. So therefore, I will get c as 0. So the question is, what is the displacement at 1 second? So displacement at 1 second, isn't it simple? v0 into 1 plus g by 2 into 1 square plus f into 1 cube divided by 3 plus 0. Constant was 0. So, which is the correct option? Isn't it C, guys? Okay, I thought, I think most of you got it wrong. NVD got it correct. Vibhyar got it correct. Science Priya, Priyanka, now. Yashwanda, I'm very good. Excellent, I am. I'm very good. Thanks for all your love and support. I'm really good. All right, so that's how it is. So, please, guys, be patient and solve it properly. Do not be in a hurry or else you'll lose marks. Not just lose marks, you'll also get negative marks. Be careful. Okay, cool. Let's get going to the next question. Okay, let's see. How many of you get this? Come on. Let's see which we enthusiast, which minion is going to get this first. 2012 question. A boy can throw a stone up to a maximum height of 10 meters. The maximum horizontal distance that the boy can throw the same stone will be with the same speed. Don't worry, Alni. It's okay. It's okay. Just watch it in a lower resolution. Come on, 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 come on. Don't worry, Murli, come on. Let's see how many of you get this. We are going to revise the entire 11 standard syllabus and all those minions, all those V enthusiasts who are joining in now. Remember, this is a session for 2021 as well as 2022 aspirants. Entire syllabus, thermo, fluids, everything, SHM, rotation, everything will be revised today. Okay, a lot of you are saying C. And let's see whether the answer is C. Okay. No pun intended. Okay, so here it is. The maximum height is 10. Formula is u square by 2g. Therefore, u square is equal to 2 into 10, 20g. Now, range max will be when the angle is 45 degrees. So, u square sine 2 theta by g. Now, u square's value is 20g. 20g. Sine of 90, it is nothing but 1 and divided by g. So that is going to make it 20 meters. Oops, oops, oops. Yes, Jugal got it. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Yes. Glad Bhuna, this has this channel's intention is to make sure that because nobody is doing this, I don't know on YouTube, nobody is teaching students in English. And the fact of matter is that you are going to learn in your graduation or post graduation in English. When you enter your workplace, you're going to talk in English. And it's sad that, you know, not many people are actually using English or not teaching in English. So we are doing that for all of you. Glad to receive all your support. Okay, so happens guys, the correct answer was D. No problems, no problems. Yes, so oh, very good. <sighs> Yes, Avinash, you can watch this video even if you're appearing for advance because first is mains, only then advance. When you take a lift, first you go to the first floor, only then the second floor and then the third floor. You obviously can't fly. All right. Very good. Let's do this. Next question, 1983. My God, such an old question. A river is flowing from west to east at a speed of 5 meters per minute. A man on the south bank of the river capable of swimming at 10 meters per minute is in still water. 
okay, wants to swim across the river in shortest time. He should swim in a direction of, come on, you should get this. Glad to know that, Bharni. Come on. Oh my God, Sakti. You're really super fast. Okay, okay. Come on, come on. Which of you, who, which one of you are going to give the correct answer? Come on, let's see. Hello, Vishnu Gaming. Come on, come on. South to north. North to south. East to west. West to east. Come on, come on, come on. Quickly. Yes. Come on, Kirito also has given the answer. Glad to know that Rocky, keep following, keep learning from me regularly. Your stress sir is going to ensure that your ranks are boosted. If you had not attended the classes, wherever you are, trust me, by attending these classes, your ranks are definitely going to be boosted. I'm going to make sure of that. Very good. Oh no, Parma, I don't think that should be correct. No, Ankit, I don't think so. No, Suman, I don't think so. Shortest time, be careful. The answer is North. Remember this. Okay, so this is your river. This is, uh, let's say, where is it going, the river? Okay, man on the south bank is capable. Um, and where is the, yeah, west to east. Okay, so this is towards the east. The river is flowing from west towards the east. If you want to cross in shortest time, you will make your strokes like this. You will try to swim like this. The flow will take you here and your resultant will be here. That's okay. You might reach here. There will be some drift. But this is for shortest time. That's what I just told you. Always use your full energy in the perpendicular direction. And that is basically in the north direction. Yes. No, not west to north. 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 Northwards. Keep this in mind. See, what did I just tell you? I gave you a trick. The river velocity does not affect your time. If you are here and I tell you, you have to reach somewhere on this line. How will you run? How will you swim to reach on the opposite side in the shortest time? Will you be a fool to run here? Or will you be a fool to run here? No, you will try to swim like this to reach there because you know river speed will never affect your time. Correcto. Nice to know that Abhisheka Sega. Welcome and I hope this will not be your last class and this will be your regular class. Before we go to the next chapter, what is the next chapter guys? Next chapter, Newton's laws, friction, work power energy, then center of mass, then rotation. All these chapters we are going to revise now. A quick update before we go ahead. Yes, yeah, we have started with test series for all the 12th and the dropper students. Yes, a lot of you I know were requesting for this. So we have come up with an excellent plan of test series. And I'll tell you two best things, only two best things. Listen to me. Number one, there are 20 tests in fact, I have to tell you three now. There are 20 mock tests planned for you on full syllabus. Yes, in the next few weeks. Also, number two, there are going to be live discussions. That means, understand, a lot of institutes, what they do in discussions, they just discuss five questions out of those 30 questions. And they'll be like, ha, other questions, you can solve it on your own or ask doubts. It's okay. So they don't discuss. Here we discuss all those questions. It's not like we are going to skip those questions. We discuss all the questions. And I'll tell you what is the best part. We discuss it in English. So there are two batches, Hindi and English. So we understand that there are two kinds of people out here. So we have a separate batch and we are going to discuss this in English. So Shivan sir, Praveen sir and Kundan sir are going to take physics, chemistry, maths discussions for all the mock test discussions that are going to happen throughout the weeks ahead and use the coupon code SHCC. If you do not want to pay 2,500 rupees and you just want to pay 100 rupees approximately for one test. So 20 mock tests guys for all of you with discussions in English. I mean, what more you want? 1,999 rupees. Go check out the description box below. There is a link. Open it up on a separate tab. Do the payment and make sure you use the coupon code SHCC so that you can avail the best of the tests in the country with in-depth analysis. Do that. Let's begin with Newton's laws and friction. Let's do this. Uh, Devashi, this is not for 11th. For 11th, we have pro subscription. So in pro subscription, there are a lot of courses going on. Even I am taking some courses. So you can join those courses for pro, uh, problems and all that. Yes, Mr. Stark. For 11th standard, we have pro subscription, lots of micro courses and tests are also going on in these pro subscriptions. Yes, let's go to Newton's laws. Okay, Mr. Stark and others. Okay, cool. Oh my God, Science Priya started distributing birthday chocolates, virtual chocolates. I like, I will take the chocolate, not the candy or the toffee. <laughs> okay, 
चलो लेट्स बिगिन ओके सेकेंड ओके कुल सो न्यूटन लॉस एंड फ्रिक्शन फर्स्ट लॉ एवरीबडी नोज बॉडी कंटिन्यूज टू मूव अनलेस एक्टेड अपॉन बाय एन एक्सटर्नल अनबैलेंस फोर्स नेक्स्ट लॉ द मैग्नीट्यूड सो सी गाइज द फर्स्ट लॉ इज ऑल अबाउट इफ देर आर फोर्सेज एक्टिंग देर आर फोर्सेज बट दे कैंसल ईच अदर देन वॉट विल द बॉडी डू इट विल कंटिन्यू टू डू वॉट एवर इट वॉज डूइंग बिफोर it will continue to do whatever it was doing before that's it that's what first law says so these forces are said to be balanced when there is an unbalance there is some net force what will that net force do it will change the momentum of the body and that force net force is dp by dt this is not one force this is the net force which is also mass into acceleration that's the second law p is momentum which is m into v third law this is very important again if there are two charges one small charge and one big charge this small charge and this big charge will experience electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion my question to you is who will apply more force on the other will the small charge apply more force on the big charge or will the big charge apply bigger force on the smaller one what do you guys think which one will apply bigger force will the small one apply or the big one apply bigger force come on think 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 What is your answer? Is your answer small or is your answer big? Come on, think about it. Two charges placed at some distance, one small, one big. This kind of question was in fact asked, yeah, in bits and many other examinations. Well, let me tell you the answer is the answer is the answer is come on, come on, come on. Big one on the small one or small one on the big one. Come on, guys, think, 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 think. No, okay, cool. let's do this so the answer is same the answer is same because newton's third law action reaction if one force is action the other force is reaction that's how it works so keep this in mind so the, all the forces always are equal in nature and they do not cancel out each other because they do not act on the same body keep this in mind okay next thing up which you should know is the friction's graph when you start pushing a body it won't move immediately you need to keep on increasing the force when you increase the applied force the resistance also increases it adjusts itself and because it is not moving it is called static friction till a particular limit which is called as a limiting frictional force what is it called it is called as a limiting frictional force as soon as you overcome the limiting frictional force what will happen the body will start sliding yes the body will start sliding and that will uh, go into the kinetic mode that is called as the kinetic friction i hope this is clear cool now very important the frictional force value is mu into n where mu is coefficient if mu is zero there is no friction what is n the normal force between the surface one last thing that i would like to tell you over here is this particular diagram if this is a box all right and this is the normal force this is the frictional force then the resultant of both of them is called as the contact force so contact force is the resultant of normal plus friction keep this in mind all right minions okay cool note this down note this down note this down okay let's get going okay let's get going to the next one okay minions i hope you can hear me loud and clear out there yeah yes no come on let me know guys are 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 you minions able to hear me loud and clear yes no shall we go ahead with the next slide come on come on come on okay let's do this so newton's laws and friction the types of forces let's do this so spring force see spring force is kx okay spring force is kx but direction wise it's always opposite to the deformation if you elongate it that force is opposite that force is opposite to your elongation so if you expand it it will try to pull it back if you compress it it will try to push you back so minus is only via direction otherwise magnitude wise it is kx next thing acha by the way k is the spring constant higher the k more the stiffness more stiffer the spring is weight weight is the force it's not mass understand that weight is the force acting on the object due to gravity keep this in mind i hope all you minions are making notes of this okay 
I am just wondering why I'm not able to see any of your chats right now. Um, just wondering out there because I'm not able to see any of your chats. I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, hold on. Is there some problem in my chat feed? Oops. I'm not sure what just happened, but I just lost the chats and I'm not able to read any of your chats. Hold on. Okay. Yes, Rocky, I'm going to teach fluids and solids also. I'm going to come to that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now I'm able to see. Oh my God. I was like, what the hell? Why am I not able to read any of your chats? What is happening out here? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, virus attack maybe. Okay, I hope you were able to see all of this because I was just teaching and I thought maybe my teaching did not uh, probably went in vain or what. Okay, so that is weight, then tension. Tension, if it is zero, the string has become slack. Whenever you see a problem where tension has become zero, remember it has become slack, okay? Or it has become loose. Normal force. Whenever you see a problem where the contact has been lost, make the normal force zero. Keep this in mind. And pseudo force, pseudo force, very good, very good, very good. I can see all of you now. Thank you. So, um, another important thing, yes, pseudo force. It will always act opposite to the acceleration of the body. Nah, wrong. It will always act opposite to the frame of reference from where you are sitting and observing. If I'm the frame, wherever I accelerate, I will apply pseudo force on anything opposite to my own acceleration. What is a non-inertial frame? A non-inertial frame is that frame which actually accelerates. All right, like lift. Lift is an example of non-inertial frame when it accelerates up or down. But the same lift going with constant velocity is an inertial frame. Keep this in mind. Okay, Vishnu, please stop spamming. Okay, here are your questions, guys, coming up on your screen. Let's revise through these questions. 2002 question. Forces F1, F2, F3 are acting on a particle of mass M such that F2 and F3 are perpendicular. Then the particle remains stationary. If force F1 is removed, then the acceleration of the particle is which of the following? Come on, think about it. All right, all right. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So Devashis, the derivation is simple. See, the thing is, all you need to do is F is dp by dt. What is P? P is mass into velocity. Take the mass outside, what will remain? dv by dt. That's it. And what is dv by dt? Acceleration. There you go. So a lot of you are saying B. Okay, a lot of you are saying B. Some of you are also saying A. All right. Mr. O is saying B. Harsha, Bhunav, A. All right. B, C. Oh my God. So let's see guys how to do this. See, what you need to do is there are forces, three forces, F1, F2 and F3. These are the forces. F2 and F3 are perpendicular. F2 and F3 are perpendicular. This is F1 acting on this mass. Now, such that, such that, uh, you know, the particle remains at rest. So can I say, can I say the magnitude of F1 force is same as the magnitude of F1 and F2 forces resultant because the net force is supposed to be zero. Isn't that right? The magnitude of this force F1 is the same as the magnitude of these two forces resultant. Now, if F1 is removed, if F1 is removed, only these two forces are there. So F2 plus F3, all right, is going to give you mass into acceleration, all right, magnitude wise. So what is F2 plus F3? F2 plus F3 is nothing but F1. So F1 is nothing but mass into acceleration. So acceleration is F1 divided by M. That is option A. Yes, that is option A. Correcto. Yes, very good, very good. Some of you only got it A. Very good, very good. Hello, Purvan Kramesh. Yes, got it. Excellento. Let's get going. Guys, do you see such kind of questions are also asked in J mains? And I find it hard to believe that people can score 20, 30 marks. Guys, trust me, if you revise with me, follow my tips, follow my strategies, you will minimum, worst case also, you will get minimum 50 marks. Minimum, I'm saying. Worst case also, you will get 50 marks. Over and above that, that will be bonus. If you're at 50, you will come to at least 60, 70, 80, 90 marks also. Don't worry. So let's get going. That was option A. 
Now let's go to the next question, 2005 question. Let's do this, let's do this. Very good, Sakti said it first, okay. So a block is kept on a frictionless inclined surface with angle of inclination alpha. The incline is given some acceleration to keep the block stationary. Then A is equal to, come on, let's see how many of the minions give you answer really quick. Harsha has said C. Definitely Sakti, why not parse C? Okay. Let's see how to solve this. Okay, see, the block remains stationary. How about making this wedge as my frame, which is non-inertial frame. This is a non-inertial frame accelerating with A. Because of which, there will be a pseudo force opposite to the acceleration. And that pseudo force value will be, magnitude of that pseudo force will be, mass into acceleration right mass into acceleration of my frame for this frame this block is at rest so the other forces which are acting are normal mg and that's about it now all those people even new and old who have forgotten or who do not know this technique very important trick i'm going to give you very important trick a lot of people face difficulty in angles i know this i know this Sir, which is alpha, which is theta? I don't know. I always get confused. Cost sign. I'll tell you. Simple trick. I have told this before, but still. Draw this. Draw this. Please draw this. Very, very interesting. Draw all these lines. Divided into eight parts. Do you see that? Now, I hope you also see if this is alpha. If this is alpha. This is alpha. If this is alpha, this is alpha. This is alpha. This is alpha. Done, done, done. done. Every alternate angle is alpha. That's your simple trick. And that's it. You get it. Yes. Uh, Devashish, I'm not sure 9 o'clock se pehle ho jayega ki nahi. But I'll try my best. But even if it happens after 9 o'clock, please watch the remaining parts recording. Okay. But today you have to put in that extra effort because today's class is very, very important for everyone. Be it J, be it NEET, be it BITS, be it CET, be it BOARDS. Very, very important. Okay. So... Once you know this, you know what to do guys. The net force should be zero because it is at rest. And which component will you balance? Along the incline. Along the incline, you'll get it. Along the incline. So think about it. Yes, you're going to get you the answer. So M is cos alpha component. It's going to be Mg's sun as usual. And acceleration will be G. Cos goes here. Sine by cos is tan alpha. That's it. That's how you get it. Is that clear? Very good. Very good. Yes. Close. Cos. And if you get confused, sir, which is cos, which is sign? Cos. Pass. Remember that. Pass means close. So the one which is closer to the angle, all right, that is cos. The one which is away, you have gone away from me. You have sinned. So that is sign. Keep that in mind. All right. Chalo. Let's get going to the next question coming up on your screen. 2004 question, a block rests on a rough surface, making an angle of 30. The coefficient of friction between the block and the plane is 0.8. Friction force on the block is 10 Newton. Okay, what is the mass of the block? Let's see how many of you do this. Let's see how many of you do this. Come on. So there is a block on an incline. All right, that is theta. Now think about the forces acting on it. One will be the downward force which is mg sine theta another one will be friction another one will be normal and another one oops that has been resolved so that will be mg cos theta now okay some of you are saying b some of you are saying b let's see how to do this okay come on 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 Okay, four. Well, 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 I'll tell you what you should do. See, the angle of inclination is 30. Okay, so what will be the friction? Will it be maximum? I don't think so. Look at this coefficient of friction. It is 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is huge friction. So I don't think friction is going to be mu n. That is wrong. No, it is not going to be mu n because think of it this way. If I find the critical angle, critical angle or I can say the mu for the slip 
condition when the angle is 30 then that mu value tan 30 is nothing but 1 by root 3 this is definitely less than 0.8 this is definitely less than 0.8 that means this angle is not so much that it comes to the verge of slipping so that means f is not equal to fs max now if that's the case what will be the friction as much as required how much ever is required it will adjust itself so that friction will be mg sine theta friction is 10 newton m is unknown g is 10 sine 30 is half 10 10 goes m is 2 kg that's the answer that's the answer correct i hope this is very very clear yes akhil we're going to cover all the 11 chapters in today's session if you guys have that energy please stay with me because i'm going to do all the chapters of 11 today nobody has done this very few teachers have done this on youtube but we are going to do all the 11 standard chapters in quick revision format marathon session for all of you yes let's go ahead work <clears throat> okay work done by a body is fs but use this formula only when force is constant okay now also remember also remember one more thing when the force is variable then use integration of force with respect to displacement okay very good nvd i want that kind of josh even if i conduct the lecture till one o'clock today you should be like yes sir we are going to do this because you are going to stay for us without having dinner it's okay i'm going to do this for you you can have your dinner but i do not have that luxury i cannot eat right now you can eat but you're going to stay for me with me for the 11th standard session kinetic energy is half mv square also another important form p square by 2m where p is momentum keep this in mind keep this in mind and all the lecture slides will be given to you in the telegram group work energy theorem total work done is oops this was supposed to be final my bad okay i'll just change this guys this was supposed to be final minus initial all right so final minus initial kinetic energy now whenever i say work done which kind of work internal plus external plus conservative plus non-conservative everything is going to come non-conservative conservative external internal all the total work done sub kuch mila karke everything is final minus initial keep this in mind this is work kinetic energy theorem this also tells you it is area under force versus not time displacement keep this in mind just a curious question what does the area under force versus time gives you what does area under force versus time give you come on think 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 what does area under force versus time give you come on think 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 what does area under force versus time give you force versus displacement area gives you work force versus time gives you excellent vijaya very good yes it is going to give you impulse the change in momentum sir potential work uh, done is also under work energy yes sakti all works conservative non-conservative yes everything comes under that okay now conservative forces what are conservative forces those forces which are independent of the path examples electrostatic magnetic gravitational all these spring all these are conservative forces the best part the best part about these forces you go via this path or go via that path the work done is always the same also when you come back to the same point the total work done is zero the total work done if you come back to the same point is zero keep this in mind okay so these are few important things regarding conservative forces then potential energy is the energy stored of a body because of its position orientation or situation out here and then yes yes harry barker we are going to do wave optics in 12th standard all right tomorrow session so you should remember this very important formula f is minus du by dx f is minus du by dx what is u u is energy what is f that force causing that energy that force causing that energy so if you have a graph of energy versus x if you have a graph of energy versus x that slope which you get over here that slope 
is nothing but du by dx. Now, if you take the negative of this slope, that negative is going to give you that force. That is what this means. That is what this means. Keep this in mind. Very good. Next up, in this, if you have a u versus x graph and you see a point here and here, this point over here is stable equilibrium and this point over here is called unstable equilibrium and the essential criteria at these two points is that du by dx which is the slope is zero keep this in mind du by dx is going to be zero all right this is maxima this is minima yes shreyas the thing is you can take screenshots and whatever i write over here uh, uh, is going to come up in the pdf all right so these are not handwritten but i i have instructed the content team to make all these notes so these are under my guidance only which all these notes have come under my guidance all right so don't worry so these are my kind of uh, notes only which i make okay we are going to come to questions you asked it and there it is akhil there we go yes akhil this is for 2022 and 2021 we are doing combination of theory concepts formulas and application of formulas via problems let's do this yes rahul kumar tomorrow is 12th standard last minute revision let's see how many of you get this a body of mass accelerates uniformly from rest to v1 in time t1 the power delivered as a function of time t is let's see okay 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 come on come on come on come on guys how many of you get this let's see okay the mass is accelerating if it is accelerating it started from rest all right it has some acceleration it gets some velocity v1 in time t1 so i can use this v1 is u plus a t1 so i'll get acceleration is v1 by t1 that's right what is the force mass into acceleration so to be mass into v1 divided by t1 correct that's the value of the force why did i find force because because power is force into velocity at that moment and at any point what is the velocity think about this that is u plus acceleration into time at that time so this is at some time instant t not t1 please bear that in mind so what is the acceleration i got it here that was v1 by t1 into t that is nothing but your uh, yeah velocity so my power will be m v1 by t1 this whole thing comes here into v1 t divided by t1 i hope this is clear yes and what should you get think about it what should you get isn't it obvious now yes very good the correct answer is b very good guys very good the answer is b excellent let's go ahead yes very good 2004 question these kind of questions come directly formula based simple questions not so difficult can be solved in under one minute let's do this very good next question 2014 question when a rubber band is stretched the restoring force is so and so it's not kx it's something x plus bx square a and b are some constants what is the work done to make it from unstretched to stretched rubber band Come on, these questions have to be done within 10 to 30 seconds, not more than that. Let's see how many of you can do this. I'm going to start solving now. This is the force. The question is, what is the work done? Oh, this is a variable force. That means I cannot use direct multiplication. I have to use integration. Let's do this. Work done is integral of force into dx. So A is going to come outside x dx plus b x square dx. 0 to L, 0 to L. So this is going to be A L square by 2 plus B L cube by 3. That is it and that is option C. Under 30 seconds. Under 30 seconds this has to be done. That's it. Done, done, done. Let's go ahead to the next question. Integration, pure integration. Very good. Excellent Eminions. I'm loving all the jokes you are showing. Very good Sakti, Nilboit, Vijaya, Yalni. Yes, Karate China. Wow, Feba. Yes, Sakti. Yes, yes. Very good, Aishwarya. Let's do this. Okay, 
Very important formulas coming up now. Remember all these formulas. Very important. Solid sphere, center of mass, center. Hollow sphere, center of mass, center. Solid hemisphere, solid, complete masala inside. 3 R by 8 from the bottom. Where is it? From the bottom. Hollow hemisphere. It's hollow. It's khokla. Nothing is there inside. Only the shell. Hemisphere. R by 2 from the center, from the bottom. Okay, very good teacher Chaitanya. Excellent. Solid cone. A cone full of ice cream. Center of mass is at a distance of H by 4 from the base. Hollow cone. Somebody ate the ice cream. Only the wafer is remaining. H by 3 from the base. Very good. Next up, solid cuboid, hollow cuboid. Cuboid, center, obviously. Solid cylinder, hollow cylinder. H by 2 on the axis, exactly on the center. Standard. This is sector and arc. Very important. Sector means pizza slice. You have a slice of pizza. You have a slice of pizza. Where would the center of mass be? The center of mass will be here. And this distance is 2 thirds R sine total angle by 2 divided by total angle by 2. Very important. For a pizza. Remember pizza slice. Alright, pizza slice. Now, arc of a circle. Somebody ate the pizza. Somebody ate the pizza. What is remaining? Only the uh, crunchy part. That crunchy part is remaining. Somebody ate the pizza, only the crunchy part. That end is remaining. That is the arc of the circle. So that's it. You can see only this much actually is remaining. So where is the center of mass? The center of mass is somewhere here. Very close to this point. This distance. Same formula. Just that two thirds is not there. That's it. Everything is same. Radius into sine total angle by 2 divided by theta by 2. Where can you use this? Yes. Huh, okay. So where can you use this? You can use this for quarter circle, semicircle, and those kind of problems. Okay, keep this in mind. This session will probably take one more hour. Okay. Chalo. Momentum and impulse. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Yes. Very, very important things. Momentum is mass into velocity. Everybody knows this. All right. Impulse is change in momentum, which is also force into time. A force is said to be impulsive if it acts for small time and changes the momentum by a large amount. Example, you hitting a ball via a bat. Huge force, small time, large change in momentum. All right. That is impulsive force. That is not impulse. That is impulsive force. Impulse is just force into time. The effect of force and time. Keep that in mind. And last over here, the area under force versus time gives you impulse. Keep this in mind. And law of conservation of momentum says that, says that if on a body or a system, the net force acting on it, all the forces cancel out, then the total momentum before, after, total, some will remain constant. Internal forces, even if present, will not matter. Keep that in mind. Yes, Science Priya, minions on fire, I love it. Very good. Let's get going to the next part. Elastic collision. Elastic collision means the bodies hit, they deform, and again come back to their original shape and size. No energy is lost. In elastic collision, bodies collide, deform, sound, heat, and so many other losses happen. So kinetic energy is lost. Keep this in mind. And that coefficient of restitution tells you whether the collision is elastic or inelastic. If it is elastic, this coefficient is 1. If it is inelastic, it is less than 1. And if it is perfectly inelastic, meaning the bodies hit and stick to each other, stick to each other, that's when E is 0, correcto. And similarly, similarly, remember one more thing, this value of E, do not by heart it as V2 minus V1 upon U1 minus U2 and all that. Don't. It's there in the books, in NCRT also maybe. Do not do that. Remember, sit on one guy and look at the other guy and see the relative speed, relative speed of separation and the relative speed of 
approach approach speed and separation speed and you know how to calculate relative speed kinematics that's it yes that's how it works keep this in mind let's do this let's do this oh my god thank you ankit i'm glad to hear that from paul sir paul sir is an amazing amazing teacher i happened to meet him once fortunately in last one month for i think vedant who's got talent he had come down to the bangalore office amazing personality he is all right let's do this 2015 question distance of the center of mass of a solid uniform cone from the vertex is z not if the radius of the base is r the height is h then z not is equal to oh no problem acha my god who oh, is it anish i'm so glad i'm so happy that he mentioned yeah i mean glad to know that all right come on come on come on come on think 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 yes d oops 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 somebody's net is slow okay 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 d d d d d okay well that is correct guys correct 3h by 4 and i'll tell you what they have just confused you they have just confused you by giving this base and random things so this is a cone and this is the radius and this is the height and what they have done from the vertex from the vertex the center of mass is here please understand this distance is h by 4 so this distance is obviously 3 h by 4 which is your z naught keep this in mind they have asked from the vertex not from the base be careful and radius never comes in the answer it was just to confuse you all right yes bitu ready correcto very good jugal and uh, so many others who gave answer d lakshmi and b b2 and so, and so many others very good let's get going to the next question here it comes oh my god a bomb is exploding 16 kg explodes into two pieces 4 kg and 12 kg the velocity of 12 kg is 4 meters per second the kinetic energy of the other mass is how much come on within 30 seconds i want all the minions to give the answer come on let's do this just manak don't worry about how many chapters are left just be happy that you are here and we are going to do everything yes just manak don't worry thank you rocky thank you glad to know that let's see within 30 seconds hi airman my god i had heard about padman i had heard about superman i had heard about batman and today we have airman hawaii man in our class amazing okay let's do this so b b b b b b b b b b okay 192 i don't know i don't know come on let's see 192 okay let's do this most of you are saying 192 some of you are saying a some of you also said many of you in fact said b also so guys think about it the two masses 4 kg and what is that 12 kg and this came from 16 kg which was at rest so what will happen this will go here this will come down correct this 4 will go up this will come down uh, the velocity of 12 kg is 4 meters per second so what is the velocity of this guy isn't it obvious conserve momentum that's it done 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 so 4 into v should be equal to 12 into 4 so 12 4 is 48 isn't it yes oops wait i don't even need to do this a 4 4 cancel v is 12 guys v is 12 what have they asked the kinetic energy the kinetic energy of the other mass half into m into 12 square 4 divided by 2 2 12 square 144 which is 288 joules which is option b and so many of you said that very good very good ashita i stay in bangalore and if you want to know more about me guys i hope you are following me on streyas underscore vedantu please do that on insta do that come on let's make this family grow like crazy let's do this guys i need your support to make sure that i'm there for you 
till your exams and not just guys our relationship is not going to get over even when your exams end if you want to maintain a relationship with me you need to follow me on stress underscore vedantu because our relationship does not end when the exams end keep this in mind okay let's do this next question 288 joules done 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 okay moment of inertia of all the bodies out here Yes, Princey, I'm going to come on. We buy tonic. I am pretty sure, pretty sure Vani ma'am also has made that announcement. I just saw some of the minions posting on Instagram tagging me. Yes, I'm going to come on buy tonic on Saturday as well. Yes, yes, NVD, you can meet me when you are in Bangalore for sure. Definitely, give me a ping. All right, first let's talk about the ring now. Okay, ring's moment of inertia, central axis, MR square, disc, MR square by two. Hollow cylinder, same as a ring. Ring, hollow cylinder, same. MR square. Disc, solid cylinder, same. Disc and solid cylinder, same guys. Keep this in mind. Yes, keep this in mind. Okay, next up, rod at the center, ML square by 12. Where is it? At the center, ML square by 12. Right angle triangle, very important. Not many people talk about this. Remember this very important formula. This kind of question has come in JE and many people ended up integrating wasted 5 minutes of their precious exam time. But those students who had studied under me knew this formula beforehand and they got the answer within 10 seconds. And the answer is yes, ha, oh sorry, 1 by 6 mb square. So if you rotate a triangle, it doesn't matter what the width is, it is 1 by 6 mb square. Keep this in mind. So Gurubeli solve many problems. That's the only way to remember it. Oh my God, Devashish. Yes, you are only that minion who had tagged me. Correct though. Yes. Then hollow sphere. 2 by 3 MR square. Hollow. This is hollow. Solid. 2 by 5. One way to remember is if it is more concentrated at the center, the factor which comes will be less. If it is more towards the outer side, then the factor will be more. So for hollow, the masses are on the out, outer side. So 2 by 3 is slightly higher, 66%, 0.66. This 2 by 5 is very small because the masses are more towards the center. That's one way of remembering this. I hope that helps. Next, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention about the perpendicular and parallel axis theorem. Keep this in mind, guys. IP, all right, parallel axis theorem is moment of inertia about center of mass plus m d square this d stands for the shift okay this is your parallel axis and perpendicular axis theorem if you have a plane sheet and in that sheet you have two axes i1 and i2 which are perpendicular to each other then the moment of inertia about another axis which is obviously again perpendicular to that as well that i3 is I1 plus I2. That is perpendicular axis theorem. Keep this in mind. And this is only valid for sheet or basically 2D objects. Keep this in mind. Only for 2D objects. Yes, and you are, you are going to get all the PDF which I am teaching, but not whatever I am writing. Whatever is there behind that you will get. Whatever I am writing, please make sure you write it down again by watching or keep making notes side by side when I'm teaching. Yes, you need to be a little bit fast. Okay, next, just like F is ma, F is mass into acceleration, torque is moment of inertia into angular acceleration. Cool. Study, study, it will start very soon. Don't worry. With your love and support, it will start very soon. Don't worry. And torque is rate of change of angular momentum. Just like force was rate of change of momentum, torque is rate of change of angular momentum keep this in mind very very important and and what is angular momentum r cross p r cross mv r cross p come on say that in your head 10 times r cross p r cross mv that's angular momentum torque is moment of inertia into angular acceleration just like f is ma say that 10 times just like f is ma torque is i into alpha and this torque is total torque also torque is dl by dt rate of change of angular momentum just like force is rate of change of momentum all right another important 
Yes, uh, NVD, don't worry, it, they will, uh, if they ask you about hypotenuse, you can use perpendicular axis theorem and all that and you can shift it nicely and you can get it. You can break it, break a rectangle or a square into half half part and you can get it. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Bhuna, you will get the PDF in the Telegram group within a few hours. If you have joined it, you will get it very soon. And we'll try and upload the link also in the description box below. But on the Telegram group, it will come very fast. Rotational kinetic energy. Half I omega square. Very similar to half mv square. Rotational kinetic energy, half equivalent of mass I omega square. But if it is rotating plus translating, then half m v square plus half i omega square two kinds of energy will come one translational plus rotational very important very important theorem for solving rolling problems cool shall we go ahead very important equation if it is rotating plus translating half m v c m square plus half i c m omega square very important graph very important chart very important difference table Come on guys, you have to note this down. All the things about rolling, forward slip and backward slip. See, in rolling, point of contact has zero velocity. In forward slip, point of contact has same velocity direction as the center has. And backward slip, point of contact has backward velocity as compared to the center's velocity. In rolling, friction does not do work. Friction will be static if present. It could be zero or it could be FS max. Sometimes even in rolling problems, no friction will act. But even if it acts, no work will be done. Also in slipping, kinetic friction will be there and it will always suck away the energy negative work because when it slips, it will do negative work. And in rolling, you can conserve mechanical energy. Keep this in mind. Yes, I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. Yes, I hope Sakti now it's clear. Uh, I guess that your doubt has been answered. Yeah, very good. Okay, cool, cool. Note this down, note this down. Meanwhile, let me just drink some water. Okay. Come on, note this down, guys. do this let's do it this oh my god Ankit don't make me jealous huh? don't say that I ate some in gulab jamuns <sighs> yes Sakti I'm hungry but I'm not going to stop I'm going to complete the entire portion today for you guys let's do this question 2008 <laughs> consider a uniform square plate of side a mass m the moment of inertia of this plate about an axis perpendicular to its plane and passing through one of its corner is this is a one minute question not 30 second but one minute question let's see how many of you do this <clears throat> ah power power yes <laughs> yes let's do this let's do this come on guys one minute question let's see how many of you minions get this so that I'm revising entire 11th standard syllabus right from vectors, mechanics, fluids, sound, waves, thermo, what else is there? Yeah, everything. Okay, okay, come on, come on. Uh, Manmudi, po post up a comment after the video ends. Definitely I'll help you out. Or you can also uh, ping me on Instagram. I'll help you out. Don't worry. After the video ends, Put a comment and those of you who are very new remember whatever comments you post on the videos of mine i always end up replying to them that's very important okay chalo let's do this a lot of you are saying d d d d okay i don't know let's try this out okay so this is a square plate this is a square plate side of a and the question is the moment of inertia of this plate about an axis perpendicular to its plane passing through one of its corners that means you're rotating it like this. Achha, I got an idea. How about knowing what is the moment of inertia about the center? Yes. And then shifting it by this distance. 
shift it by this distance d well for that i will need this d value and i can find that out by geometry because if i draw another line over here that would be also d and you can see from here a square plus a square is equal to 2d square therefore think about it this will become 2a square is 4d square therefore d is a divided by root 2 that is that distance between them now do i know the moment of inertia about the center of mass of a square plate i'll tell you what the moment of inertia about the center of mass of any rectangular plate is 1 by 12 m okay length square plus breadth square remember this formula very important formula a hidden formula i'm giving it to you in the question 1 by 12 m length square plus breadth square now here both the breadth and the length are the same so it is just going to become m a square by 6 now whatever icom you get just add plus md square only then you will get the moment of inertia about this axis the moment of inertia about this axis and that will be m a square by 6 plus m a square by 2 and what is it going to be 1 6 plus 1 half is it not going to be 2 thirds m a square guys that's the answer that's the answer very good very good ah uh, no bit ready you use this for rectangles m a square plus b square by 12 that's used for rectangles keep this in mind so if you have a rectangle and this is the axis all right this is a and this is b you can use this formula okay keep this in mind cool 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 ashutosh the class will go on for at least more 40 minutes or so okay so that's the answer let's get going to the next one minimum 40 minutes at least chalega 45 minutes yes uh, Sai Mandeep, this is a complete 11th revision class. Come on guys, start solving this problems plus concepts plus formulas for all 2021 and 2022 students. Okay, come on, think, 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 think. Thank you Devashis for making that Garma Gram coffee. I love coffee and tea both. <laughs> okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Chalo. Yeah, I know y'all need too many virus, but it's okay. Our love is more than the hate. Hey, nah? Come on, let's do this. Let's do this. Sakti says D. Yes, NVD, I'm not going to... Uh, Naidu, I'm not going to hurry. Don't worry, but I need your support. I'm. If you guys stop listening to me, then I will not get that energy. So I need your support. Bring in your friends. Text your friends. ASVS sir is teaching. Come on, join, man. Come on, get your 10 friends along. Come on, come on, come on. Do that. Let's do that. Oh my God, who is this Saurav Singh Singhna? Uh, Saurav Singh, this is not shadi.com. Please uh, get lost. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, the correct answer is angular momentum. Correcto. The angular momentum. See, if the radius keeps shrinking, understand the angular momentum will not change. Angular momentum will not change. Please understand this. Oops, I went to the next question by mistake. Hold on. See guys, very, very important. <clears throat> if torque is zero, then dl by dt is zero. That means L is constant. Now, if the radius shrinks on its own, there is no torque acting on it. Please understand this is external torque, not internal. So it might shrink. There is no torque on it. It might shrink on its own. So angular momentum will remain constant. So if R decreases, in fact, angular velocity will increase to preserve the angular momentum. Keep that in mind. Yes. Keep this in mind. Very good. Let's get going to the next one. Now this is direct formula based. It was asked in 2007. Can you believe that? This is 10 second question. Let's see how many of you give this answer in 10 seconds. Come on. <clears throat> Soldier Sandhya and others, please talk in English. We made an English channel for you. Not so that because you can chat in your own languages. Come on, guys. Talk in English. Yes. Why not D in the previous? Sakti says, uh, what was D? I need to get back to that previous question. 
रोटेशनल काइनेटिक एनर्जी ओ इवन व्हेन एंगुलर मोमेंटम इज कंजर्वड एनर्जी मे नॉट बी कंजर्वड इनफैक्ट इफ यू डू हाफ आई ओमेगा स्क्वायर यू विल से ओनली आई ओमेगा इज कांस्टेंट आई ओमेगा स्क्वायर वोंट बी कांस्टेंट दैट्स व्हाई शक्ति ऑल राइट थैंक यू अशिता गुप्ता एवरी मिनट इज प्रेशियस थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच यस बी डी वेल द करेक्ट आंसर इज एक्चुअली बी नाउ दिस इज अ फार्मूला व्हिच यू शुड रिमेंबर रिमेंबर दिस वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर्मूला डायरेक्ट फॉर्मूला जी साइन थीटा अपॉन वन प्लस आई बाई एम आर स्क्वायर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर्मूला फॉर अ रोलिंग ऑब्जेक्ट डाउन एंड इंक्लाइन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट करेक्ट हो लेट्स गेट गोइंग टू द नेक्स्ट वन लेट्स गेट गोइंग टू द नेक्स्ट वन लेट्स सी दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन टू बी सॉल्व विद इन ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी सेकेंड्स ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी सेकेंड्स थैंक यू साई मंदीप आई एम ऑलवेज देर फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू Yes, Mini Pahul. Come on, let's see. 2009 question. And by the way, a special announcement: we have crossed 15,000 subscribers. Thanks to all of you. Thank you very much for making this happen. Yes, let's do this. Come on, guys. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. C D. Hoo hoo hoo. Yes. C or D, C or D, C or D. Okay, and the correct answer is keep this in mind. By the way, oops, what the hell? Yeah, this point is at rest zero velocity. This point has velocity v, and the topmost point it has a velocity two v. I hope you remember this in the rolling motion. V two v. Why two v? Because it is v. Plus omega r, and what is omega r? Omega r itself is v. That's why it is two v. Keep this in mind. Now, guys, look at these options and think about it. Think about it and tell me which one will be correct. Yes, isn't it? V c minus v a is twice of v b minus v c. Shouldn't this be correct? Because this is v c a is twice of v b c. That's it. Correct. So option c. Excellent, guys. This is purely conceptual based. Asked in 2009, guys. Believe me, there are many simple questions asked in JE. Just that people think JE is difficult. But if you are with me, trust me, you are going to boost your performance by minimum, minimum 15 marks just by attending today's lecture completely. Let's do SHM, and 15 marks is going to decide whether you are going to get a college or not get a college. SHM equations are quickly. Let's do this. X is a sine omega t. Come on, keep writing with me. Keep saying it in your head ten times, twenty times. Keep saying that. Velocity a omega cos omega t plus phi. Come on. Acceleration minus a omega square sine omega t plus phi. Okay. Next up. <coughs> This is v max. This is Acceleration maximum, maximum acceleration. Okay, next up, acceleration is minus omega square x. Velocity is omega root a square minus x square. Very very important equations. Time period formula, two pi under root m by k. Also, time period is two pi divided by omega, or omega is two pi by time period. Both works. Okay, and time period is also one by frequency, obviously. Next up, yes. Thank you, and very the Josh is high, very good, and uh, so many others. Yes, my God, soldier Mudu, please talk in English, man. Hey, come on, yes, yeah. Thank you, Kumar Venkatraman. Hello, Noob Gaming, welcome. Yes, very good, Padmalata Pankota. Yes, Biswajit, thank you, thank you so much for all your love and support. And now, energy-related formulas. I hope you have noted it down, said this in your mind at least ten times. Next up, kinetic energy plus potential energy is constant, and that total energy is half k a square. This a is amplitude. This k is spring constant. Keep this in mind. Very very important. Very very important. Note this down. Yes. Cool. Next up, phase diagram. Everything that you need about the phase. If you rotate, if you rotate a line, 
with constant angular speed like this. And if you draw the projection, you will see that that projection will perform simple harmonic motion. Projection of circular motion is simple harmonic motion. Just make sure that the radius of that circular motion is the amplitude of oscillation. The radius of the circular motion is the amplitude of oscillation. The angular speed of rotation is the angular frequency of oscillation. The angular speed of rotation is angular frequency of oscillation. And next up, initially, if this is the angular position, that is the phase constant of the SHM. Keep this in mind. Yes, very good, very good, very good, Princey. Yes, cool, 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 cool. No problem, Devashis. I understand, I understand, I understand. No problem, no problem. But please watch the remaining part, whatever you miss in the replay, all right? Because a lot of important things coming up. All right, next, angular SHM time period. Angular SHM time period. Time period is 2 pi under root L by G. Simple pendulum, but for physical pendulum, 2 pi under root moment of inertia by MGD. What is this D? This D is distance from the pivot point to the center of mass. Keep this in mind. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead with the next concept. So angular SHM, this is very, very important. And remember, just like in linear SHM, force was kx. Here, the torque is proportional to theta. Torque is proportional to theta. Therefore, the time period is 2 pi under root. Instead of mass by k, you have moment of inertia by that constant, whichever comes over here. So if this torque is some magnitude wise, if it is c times theta, i by c, this is generally called as your torsional constant. Keep this in mind. Torsional constant. Correct. Correct. Very good. Very good. Yes. Let's get going to the next one. Okay. Here comes 2004 question. Let's see how many of you are able to solve this in 40 to 50 seconds. Not more than this. This is a 40 to 50 second question. A particle at the end of a spring executes SHM. Time period T1. Corresponding period for another spring T2. Same mass, another spring, time period T2. First spring T1. If you attach them in series, then the new time period is how much? Well, it's Sakti says B. Very good. Yes, Sai Mandeep, this is meant for mains. Obviously, when you clear mains, then it will be helpful for advanced. So, welcome all the main students for 2021 and 2022. This is a session for you. Option C, Sakti says, then change to D. Come on, come on, come on. MD Wakif says B. Pro monster, if you're going to spam, you will get blocked. Be careful. Okay, just one X says B. Guru Prasad says C. Okay, come on, 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 come on. Thank you, Simon Deep. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, the correct answer is let's do this. First of all, okay, it's t square is t1 square plus t2 square. And I'll tell you how. Okay, so the time period is 2 pi under root m by k, isn't it? So therefore, k is how much? Just square both sides, all right? And shift it, it will become 4 pi square m divided by t square. And I hope you know when springs are in series, their equivalent spring constant can be found out by this very simple term 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 is equal to 1 by k. That's the formula. So 1 by k1, oh, 1 by k is t square by 4 pi square m. So 1 by k will be t1 square by 4 pi square m plus same thing again t2 square by 4 pi square m, which is equal to uh, t square by 4 pi square m. This, this, this goes and you'll get this answer. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, cool. Let's get going to the next one coming up on your screen. Let's see how many of you get this. Two SHMs are represented by these equations. 
द क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज द फेस डिफरेंस बिटवीन दैम दिस इज अ वन मिनिट क्वेश्चन लेट्स यू हम यू टू डू दिस येस जस्ट लाइक कैपेसिटर एंड वेडी करेक्ट थैंक यू सिवान कमान वन मिनिट क्वेश्चन नॉट मोर देन वन मिनिट बट यू कैन डू दिस मच लेसर देन वन मिनिट ऑल राइट ऑल राइट कमान थिंक 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 okay a lot of new people joining in and all the new members do not forget to hit the subscribe button down there and do not forget to smash that like button down there okay do that come on come on come on hargi park who says b vijay krishnan says b kali sriya says c guru prasad says b kirito says pi by 3 all right he and let's see what is the correct answer oh the answer is minus pi by 6 Why is it minus pi by six? Let's do this. Look at this term. Y two. Y two is point one. Be careful. This is cos. This is sine. You cannot do it so easily unless you convert the cos into sine. And how do we do that? Trigonometry. Cos. Well, come on. Think. Sine of pi t plus pi by two. Sine of theta plus pi by two. Sine of theta plus pi by two is cos. Isn't that correct? Now you compare. Now you compare. Oh, I think this was supposed to be hundred. One hundred is missing, guys. I'm so sorry that hundred was missing. Just ignore that part. So this was also supposed to be hundred pi t. Okay. Now look at pi by three and pi by two. So phase difference of one with respect to two is phase one minus phase two, which is pi by three minus pi by two, which is minus pi by six. Isn't that correct? Very good. Ah, uh, no TFS. Honestly speaking, no. If you do not know mechanics, no. CS is very difficult. You need to be in top three digit ranks. Yes. Okay. Let's get going to the next one. Thermal physics, guys. We have reached thermal physics. Hardly anything remaining. Thermal physics, fluids and waves. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes. Only three parts remaining. Come on. Yes, three parts remaining. So, dear Muddu, please talk in English. Don't use your coded language now. Come on, we are all here. You have to make friends. You cannot make. You cannot lim be limited to your regional languages out here. Come on, very good. Let's do this. Thermal physics coming up on your screen. Change in length because of expansion. Change in exp. Uh, yeah, length because of expansion. L not original length alpha coefficient of linear expansion into delta t. Okay. Aerial expansion a not beta delta t beta is aerial expansion's coefficient delta v change in volume is original volume coefficient of volume expansion delta t and remember the temperature convergence I am giving this to you and very important rista relation between alpha beta and gamma alpha beta gamma how are they related very important beta is twice alpha gamma is thrice alpha. Simple area is length into breadth. Two things are there, so two alpha. Volume is three things: length, breadth, height. So three times of alpha. Keep this in mind. Okay, okay, okay. Understood. Cool, 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 cool. Let's do this. Yes, R T. The physics is the same, right? For both. That's why it is useful for both kind of preparations. Yes, let's do this. Okay. So keep this in mind. Let's go to the next one. Calorimeter. Inside an insulated closed chamber. Inside an insulated closed chamber where nothing can go in, nothing can come out. All right. Understand. Heat lost by hot bodies is heat gained by cold bodies till they all come to the same temperature, which is then said to be in thermal equilibrium. Yes. Till. They all come to yes thermal equilibrium. Rock, sorry, you cannot score forty plus by this session. You will be able to score at least fifty plus by this session. Not forty plus. Forty plus is too low. Minimum fifty. Minimum bare minimum. I am telling fifty plus just by this session. Good evening, Sagar. I am not ma'am. I am a guy. I am a man, not a ma'am. Okay, cool. Let's get going. <laughs> yes, Arthi, it is. Obviously useful beta for both. No problem, Prince C. Yes. And if you are th expecting 50, then I feel by attending this class you should be able to score minimum 70. If you are able to score 70, I think minimum 80, 90. That's how it is. 
Cool. Let's get going. And remember these formulas. Remember these formulas. Q is equal to MC delta T. This is specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity for water is one calorie per gram per degree Celsius. And for heat conversion, M into L, this is latent heat. Okay, latent heat. And remember these special values. For ice to water, for ice to water, it is 80 calories per gram. And latent heat for water to uh, vapor or steam, I would say. And vice versa, for both ways. Okay, it is 540 calories per gram. Keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. Okay, 2Q. Where is it 2Q? I'm not sure where you're talking about. Uh, Sivam Shankara. Yes, yes, you can use this. Oh, this is not charge. This is heat, my dear friend. Yes, this is heat. This heat. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Yes, cool. Probeer depends where you were. If you are early, earlier in 60s, 70s range, definitely you can score, uh, boost your score by at least 15 marks. Wherever you were. If you are earlier getting around 60, 70, then you can get around 80 marks just by attending today's session completely in detail and solve the problems with me. Okay, everything in one slide, note it down, note it down, everything, all kinds of processes, isochoric, isobaric, isothermal, adiabatic, gas law, pressure proportional to temperature, isochoric means volume constant, isobaric, pressure constant, isothermal, temperature constant, adiabatic, no heat lost or gained. Work done, zero for isochoric. And adiabatic heat is zero. Look at that, adiabatic heat is zero. And for isothermal, temperature does not change. So internal energy change will be zero. And this all should follow first law. What is first law? First law. In physics, be careful. Q is delta U plus W. This is first law. Everywhere this plus uh, sorry, this plus this is going to be this. Keep this in mind. Yes. Oh, well, Bali. Hello, welcome. Join in. Okay, cool. Factors, which factors NVD? Okay, Wali. Uh, well, maybe not so much. Maybe you can say something. Maybe then I'll remember. <clears throat> yeah, all these are very, very important stuff. Cool, cool, cool. I hope you have noted it down. At least take a yeah, 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 definitely, Kirito. I'll wait. I'll wait. Come on, come on. Thank you, Mukesh. Yes, I'm going to bless you, students. At da. Glad, Mukesh. Glad, Mukesh. Well, guys, do you know what? You guys are at least probably having chips for dinner. I haven't even had dinner, but I'm going to be there for you because I know how important this session is for scoring, for scoring at least plus 15 to plus 20 marks from your current marks just to score more marks very important all right let's do this let's do this come on okay next radiation radiation no side mandeep i'm only taking up physics okay so here we go concentrate now everyone radiation radiation falls on something Oops, come back. Okay, so let's say the incident radiation is Q dot I. Now, if you're wondering what this dot is, see guys, X dot is dx by dt. That's just a short form of derivatives. So that dot, if it is double dot, then it is second derivative. That's all. Okay, so don't get scared. Now, Q dot I means the rate at which energy comes inside. If energy falls on a surface, three things can happen. It can get reflected, so Q dot R. It can get absorbed, so Q dot A. And some can also be transmitted. Okay, I think transmitted is missing over here, but I'll just put it over here. Something can be transmitted. Transmitted. And that is Q dot T. Now remember these values formulas q dot i whatever is incident will be reflected will be absorbed and will be transmitted 
दिस इज लॉ ऑफ कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी थैंक यू आशिता ग्लैड टू नो दैट हाई सार्थक वेलकम एंड यू हैव द कोइफिशियंट्स रिफ्लेक्टिविटी एब्जॉर्क्टिविटी एंड ट्रांसमिटिविटी दैट इज ऑल्सो इक्वल टू वन रिमेंबर ईच ऑफ दिस कोइफिशियंट्स is like uh, how much heat is reflected upon how much heat falls how much heat is absorbed upon how much heat is incident and this is nothing but how much heat is transmitted upon how much heat falls this is the coefficient keep this in mind every body will emit radiation and this emitted radiation this emitted radiation okay depends on this emitted radiation depends on three things area surface and temperature and what is the formula well qe emitted radiation is emissivity into sigma into area into t raised to 4 keep this in mind temperature area and nature of surface please keep this in mind that this value e okay is one for a black body for a black body it is one so this is emitted radiation so everything around you will also emit radiation at the same time things will be falling on it so whatever falls on it will be either reflected absorbed or transmitted that's how it is nagabhushana yes all the pdfs will be there but whatever i'm writing will not be there so please keep in mind you keep making notes along with me that's why you need to attend the live class beta else you will miss out and also keep this in mind this value of a this value of a which is there over here this value of a is equal to e this is kirchhoff's law this is called as kirchhoff's law keep this in mind very very important guys so many important formulas in one thing yes yes very good very good very good keep this up keep this up keep this up next up shall we go ahead i hope you have made notes i hope you guys have made notes yes i'm coming to wien's law also hold on just one second newton's law of cooling very important if a body which is hot is left to cool in surroundings then if you draw a tangent okay this tangent slope the slope gives you rate of change of temperature with time this is called as rate of cooling and this point minus this point which is the surrounding temperature surrounding temperature this difference which is there this difference that is there okay let's come over here okay this difference which is there okay this difference is basically current temperature minus surrounding temperature and guess what this rate of cooling which is dt by dt is directly proportional to t minus t of surrounding very very important very very important t of surrounding keep this in mind for solving newton's law related problems okay very good so concentrate now mr stark for now at least i'm doing for physics other subjects will also follow don't worry okay next up next up i hope you all noted this down very important current temperature minus surrounding temperature why because eventually the body will cool down and get the surrounding temperature that's why yes hold on teacher then up fluids is also coming don't worry other topics are also important and remember this net heat flow is always e sigma a this is net this is net emitted minus absorbed all right emitted emitted minus absorbed keep this in mind t raised to 4 minus surrounding temperature raised to 4 very important very important keep this in mind thank you arsha with your love and support i'm pretty sure that will also happen thank you very much for all your love and support guys okay let's do this 1987 question come on yes let's do this let's do this okay uh navant even during a live video you can take the video back there is an option on youtube you can replay back and catch up at 2x speed also you can do that 
Navant, you can do that, okay? Yes, but if you want me to go back a little bit, so this is how it looks like, okay? But now whatever I've written down will go away. So that's why I'm saying, please do that. Just rewind back, it will come out. Yes, very important question. Sometimes Mr. Stark and others remember, very old questions get repeated in different ways in the current years and this has happened. This has happened. Yes, let's do this. Oh, by the way, this question has been repeated in different ways. Exactly not the same powers, but in different ways in, uh, yeah, keep this in mind. Cool. So, okay. So there we go. Let's solve this question. What is the final answer? Come on, 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 guys. Waiting for your answers. VP raised to two is constant. Use gas law. What is pressure? Isn't it NRT by volume? NRT by volume whole square is constant. Isn't that right? Now do this. You will see N square, R square, T square. One volume will get cancelled is constant. That means temperature is basically some new constant into root of V. Square root and N and R are constants. That's what I get. Now do the math. Initially the temperature is T. All right, it is some constant into root V. New temperature, I don't know, let's say I call it T1, is that same constant, but the volume becomes 2V, that's given. 2V is the new volume, okay? Now do the math, T by T1 is one by root two, so T1 is root two times of T. That's the answer, correct. Well, if it is lagging, just refresh. Just refresh, just refresh. Keep this in mind, just refresh and uh, just check your internet connectivity. Just check it out. If somebody else is using your internet, just check your download speed, etc. And also lower your resolution for some time and again come back, correct. Let's get going to the next one. Coming up, yeah, there we go. 2000 question, which of the following graphs represent the temperature variation with heat supplied for an ice of minus 10 degrees Celsius when it is converted to steam at 100 degrees Celsius. Come on, let's see how to do this. Let's see. Aditya, last warning, if you are rude to our admin, you will be blocked. So make sure, yes, very good. And apologize to our admin for talking like that. You are a student, you cannot talk such words to our admins. All right. Okay, some of you are saying A, some of you are saying D, some of you are also saying C. Aray, kuch to chodo. <laughs> Premini also said B. Wow, we have all the options now. Harsha said B. A, B, C, D. Guys, be careful. 2000 question. This is very simple. Should be solved in 20 to 30 seconds. Yes, Ashita, I agree. In trions. Okay, I'll tell you what. It's ice, right? It's ice at minus 10 degrees Celsius. First, when you heat it, what will happen? Temperature will rise, correct? Temperature will rise. But when it converts from ice to water, what will happen? Temperature will remain constant till it completely converts into water, correct? Till it completely converts into water, it will, con it will be constant. And then the water will get heated till it boils at 100. And in that boiling process, temperature will remain constant. There is only one graph like that. And that is option A. Yes, correct. Some of you got it now. Very good, very good. That is option A. Temperature increases constant for it to melt. Once it melts, increases, boils and converts into steam. That's it. Understood guys? No, C is not an option. No, C is not correct. In C, for some time temperature is constant. How can temperature be constant from minus 10 to zero? No, initially only the temperature will start increasing. Yes, I hope this is clear. So that's why it is not C. Okay, let's get going. There is a body, there is a body. Ice to water to, uh, should be zero slope. Correct Kirito, yes. There is a body of some radius, 450 watts, this much power at 500 Kelvin. If radius is halved and the temperature is doubled, what is the new power? This question should be solved in 30 seconds. Let's see how many of you can do this. Yes, Navant, very good, you understood. 
Come on, let's see how many of you can do this within 30 seconds. Trust me, it's very easy. Directly based on formula, ratio proportion. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, minions. Very good, Bitu ready, very good, everyone. Very good. Come on, come on, come on. Hello, Bhuna, come on, start solving. Okay, B or D. <clears throat> I'll tell you what. Power is E sigma A T raised to 4. Correct? What is area? 4 pi R square. Temperature raised to 4. Now E is constant, sigma is constant, 4 pi is also constant. So the new power upon the old power will be R1 or R2 by R1 whole square because everything is constant and obviously T2 by T1 whole raised to 4. Now just do the math. It's very simple. See, what is the new power? I don't know. That's what I need to find. What is the old power? 450. Okay. The new radius. Radius is halved. So the new radius is half. So half square and the temperature is doubled. So 2 by 1 whole raised to 4. This is going to be 2 square. So the new power will be 450 multiplied by 4, which is 1800 watts, which is option D. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Understood? Very good, guys. Let's go ahead. Here it comes. <clears throat> Wien's displacement law based question. Let's see how many of you get this. Direct question was asked in 2000. Direct question. Come on, let's see how many of you can do this. Three graphs are given. T1, T3, T2. Which of the following option is correct? This is 20 second question. 20 second question. No problem, Yalini. It happens. 20 second question. Come on guys, we are revising entire 11 standard syllabus. All those people who are joining in new to this session, don't worry, you can watch the replay of the missed part, but we are revising everything. We are right now in thermo. We are going to go to fluids and waves. Those are the only two topics remaining. This is for all 2021 as well as 2022 aspirants. Now be it J, need, boards, bits, CET, doesn't matter. Join in. Okay, C, B or what? Guys, Wien's displacement law. Wien's displacement law says, lambda max into temperature is constant so you can see these are the lambda max now whose lambda is highest t2 is highest so t2 will be the least think about it okay t2 will be the least and there is only one such option like that do you see that yes very good many of you got it and that is why option b will be correct and t1 has the lowest lambda max so t1 will be the highest maximum this is maximum and this will be minimum correct that is the answer option b very good minions means displacement law let's get going cool very good harsha said it first very good very good very good so a is not correct be careful rocky bye all right let's get going to the next one fluids we have arrived at fluids hardly anything left now come on let's do this no 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 it's not no mr stark understand when i say lambda max it's the lambda at which the intensity is maximum. Do not check the height of the graph. T3 might be higher. This is intensity. This is not temperature. Be careful. This is intensity versus lambda graph. Okay. Cool. Yes. Cool. Okay. Now, pressure at surface, if it is P0, pressure below is P0 plus liquid GH. Liquid density GH. But pressure on the top is P0 minus density of air GH. Be careful. Density of air, density of fluid. Two different things. And pressure only depends on height or depth, not on the horizontal displacement. And the rate at which pressure changes, dp by dy, is minus rho g. Very important. What is this called, guys? dp by dy? What is this called? dp by dy. This is called as pressure gradient pressure gradient very very important and one last thing before we continue ahead 
the pressure will vary like this pressure will vary like this and understand this will be g and g is always perpendicular to these lines these lines are called as isobars these points have the same pressure so this is isobar p1 p2 p3 and so on and so forth it keeps on increasing keep this in mind cool let's get going okay Murgesh, you're going to get blocked on this channel man okay very very important keep this in mind also useful for solving problems based on liquid surface container moves so where is the surface how how much angle does it make keep this in mind pseudo force gravity everything should be accounted for and you take the net gravity take the net gravity the net gravity wherever it comes wherever the g net comes that's what the surface is going to be perpendicular to the surface of a liquid is always perpendicular to the net gravity what is g g is gravitational acceleration crazy okay which is okay cool let's get going keep this in mind thank you madhu all right next up okay barometer and manometer what is manometer used for for finding the pressure dip difference between two gases so keep this in mind guys keep this in mind the height difference between the columns the height difference between the columns is rho g h that is p1 minus p2 keep this in mind keep noting this down okay one more thing lot of people get confused sir which points pressure is equal to which uh, points pressure now understand very very important concept see it's not just about formulas point e and f's pressure is always same because if it was not same then the liquid will start flowing point c and point b's pressure is also same these two points have same pressure these two points have same pressure but b and f obviously f is below they have different pressure if i talk about a and d they will not have the same pressure why because you are not going up or down in the same liquid so always go from below and then go on the top to check which two points have the same pressure as long as you are in the same liquid the pressure in the same horizontal level is same but if you enter a different liquid the pressures won't be same keep this in mind yes so v rho g and rho g h c sakti v rho g this formula is for buoyant force buoyant force this is your submerged volume what is this this is your submerged volume okay keep this in mind this is your upthrust or basically your buoyant force and rho g h this is your pressure difference pressure difference keep this in mind i hope this is clear okay cool i hope i'm clearing all your doubts also here guys this is the best session i think you can ever have i mean live session revising all the formulas out here yes mr stark but it's always important to attend it live because trust me when you watch, watch a cricket match live the experience is different than watching it recorded you will miss a lot of things cool so attend it live because you can also ask and involve yourself in the crowd cool next up barometer barometer is used to measure the actual pressure so bope vasant please post up a comment later on on the video i will try to reply to it or contact me on strays underscore vedantu and if you are new do not forget to hit the subscribe and the like button so that you get all your updates rho g h very important formula i hope you have noted it down okay now surface tension surface tension guys come on come on come on come on come on let's do this let's do this okay surface tension is the tendency of a liquid to contract its area because the molecules on the surface have higher energy and they do not like to be on the surface so these molecules tend to come inside and try to reduce or contract its surface area cool so the force of surface tension on the surface is the constant of surface tension into the length keep this in mind so if you have a rod and there is a film and there is a c-shaped wire frame where there is a film please keep in mind 
that that force acting on the rod is not SL because you might think this is L so force will be SL no if you look at it sideways all right if you look at it from here this rod will have a cross section like this this film will have an upper surface which you can see and a surface behind think of a surface behind so there are two surfaces so that's why it is two times of SL keep this in mind <clears throat> is that clear everyone is that clear so two SL and last thing USA remember this USA surface potential energy surface potential energy is S into A useful for solving problems involving blowing of a bubble how much energy changes a drop breaks into many parts how much is the heat generated created etc so sakti it is s i think that gamma has just come by mistake so this is supposed to be s okay so this is supposed to be s okay so this is 2sl keep this in mind okay cool 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 glad to know that rocky bye all right next up for drops and bubbles remember whenever there is one surface the pressure difference is 2s by r but when there are two surfaces the pressure difference is 4s by r now who has one surface a drop in air like a drop of water in air or a bubble in water yes a bubble in water is also having one surface but a bubble in air will have two surfaces why because one surface is inside remember that thin layer will have two surfaces so it will be 4s by r pressure inside a drop or a bubble is always more keep this in mind is always more okay so pressure in this is called as excess pressure next up capillary rise formulas remember this 2s cos theta by rho gr what is theta what is theta What is theta? It is angle of contact. What is S? Surface tension. What is rho? Density. What is G? Gravity. What is R? Radius of the capillary. Keep this in mind. Okay. Viscosity formula. Viscosity formula. If there are two surfaces sliding over each other, then you will see that there is a velocity gradient which is set up yes the velocity will keep changing velocity will keep changing so this is one plate this is another plate that is the area this is called as the velocity gradient keep this in mind this is called velocity gradient and this is dv by dy all right and that force which you need to pull should be opposite to the drag force and that is given by eta a dv by dy this is called as newton's law of viscosity newton's law of viscosity this is change in velocity this is change in velocity dy is nothing but change in height keep this in mind cool yes eta I dv by dx yes okay i hope navan this is clear so when two surfaces slide you will see each layer will move with different velocity so there is a velocity gradient which is set up and the drag force which is experienced is eta times area of contact into dv by dy velocity gradient i hope navan this is clear okay very good science pr very good aryan yes capto yes yalani okay keep this in mind oops i got what the hell oops okay let's go ahead one second uh, Nivya, we are going to do all concepts of 11th yes but we are right now in fluids uh, whatever you have missed you can watch the replay but for now whatever is remaining watch it live that is very important next formula drag force this is called stokes law this is stokes law this is called a stokes law so in stokes law remember that the drag force is 6 pi eta r v very very important formula 6 pi eta r v keep this in mind what is eta viscosity what is r radius what is v speed okay and the terminal velocity is 2 by 9 r square rho minus sigma by g uh, sorry rho minus sigma g divided by eta 
what is this terminal velocity eventually the particle is going to come down with constant speed that is called terminal speed many questions on terminal speed are going to be there in the examination one more thing since we are talking about fluid dynamics if you have a pipe of different areas all right here the speed is v1 and here the speed is v2 and this cross section is at height h1 and this is at height h2 from some line doesn't matter which line but some line and here the pressure is p1 and here the pressure of the liquid is p2 then there are two equations which you should keep in mind what are those two equations number one equation of continuity a1 v1 is a2 v2 which is called as the rate of flow yes this is also the rate of flow of the liquid another important equation is three terms you will get p1 plus rho g h1 plus half rho v1 square will be p2 plus rho g h2 plus half rho v2 square this is Bernoulli's equation keep this in mind two very very important equations very good very good Aryan Yalni Ashita very good Harsha very good Sivan yes uh, Sakti I'm guessing around two to three questions at least might come yeah two three yeah not more than that because you just have 30 questions and 40 chapters let's see how many of you minions can solve this question within 30 seconds there is a jar filled with two liquids okay and look at that this liquid has a density rho 1 this liquid has a density rho 2 this solid over here has a density rho uh, okay yeah the ball is made of density rho 3 if it is dropped in the jar it comes to equilibrium position over here what is the relationship between them hello Harish welcome to this channel very good NVD glad to know that come on minions I think you have cooled down I have not cooled down I have not cooled down have you cooled down come on keep the chats coming Ashita you can attend the sessions here only <laughs> okay and sometimes I do come up on a biotonic channel as well so don't worry okay B B B come on crazy says D Sakti says B all right come on come on come on come on minions Thank you, Keshav. Thank you so much. Yes. Very good. Very good. So, see guys, since this liquid is floating, this liquid is floating, rho 1 should be less and this is sinking. So, this should be highest. And since it is floating in between both of them, this should be somewhere in the middle. Correct? So row 3 is in middle, row 1 should be the least and row 2 should be the highest. So yes, the correct answer is option D. You can see that. Thank you Aryan so much. Thank you Raghavendran. Yes, that's the correct answer. Row 1 is the less, least value is floating. Row 2 is sinking highest and row 3 somewhere in between. Keep this in mind. Yeah, don't worry, it exactly happens. Sometimes you say exactly the opposite okay these balls falling in a viscous fluid speed v the retarding force retra retarding force is acting on the spherical ball come on which of the following is correct directly theory based question asked in 2004 let's see how many of you minions can crack the 2004 exam question come on no problem when it happens happens so that's why you need to be very careful because you will lose not only lose those four marks but you'll also get minus one mark so that's why be careful happens happens but learn that's why i'm solving these questions for you guys come on come on come on come on come on minions all right omkar anand says b aryan also says b harsha says c oh my god sivan come on get your friends let's make this bigger come on let's do this and the correct answer is directly proportional to both radius and velocity direct question based on stokes law direct question based on stokes law and what does it say the drag force is 6 pi eta r into v so proportional to radius as well as velocity directly proportional that's option b excellent a last topic guys are you now fully yes 
Are you now fully pumped up to get to the last topic? Yes, Arthak, very good. Yes, Sakti, 300 likes and stronger. Let's do this. And before that, a special announcement before we go to waves. Let's do this. Wow, Kirito, nice to see you. Very good, very good, very good. Remember, test series starting for all of you. Yes, minions, test series. And that to 20 mock tests with three special features. What are those three special features? Number one, live discussion. Yes, each question paper will have live discussion with all the questions discussed, which I don't think even the top institutes of offline coaching do that. I know what they do. They hardly discuss five, six questions and only the toppers will be there and they'll be like, ha, ha, tum log kya doubt hai? what is your doubt? And they just tell, ha, this is the doubt, ha, you guys can solve the remaining questions, ha, do this. That's what they do. I know what happens. Number two, this test series is going to be in English discussion. Yes, English discussion. That's what happens. And number three, you can get your doubts solved along with a main teacher. There is a class teacher who will be answering and assisting you with all the doubts during the class. And yes, guys, all the best teachers are going to teach you. And guess what? The price is hardly 1999. You can do the math. How much per test? Are you not willing to pay this much for the test series? Come on, do this. Use the coupon code SHCC and register for the cr crash test series, the mock test series right away. Do not wait if you are a J aspirant, if you want to crack the examination. And also do not forget, if you want lectures also, if you want lectures also, entire syllabus, 11th and 12th standard completely revised. Do not worry, there is a crash course for all of you, along with replay of all the sessions, along with the best teachers, of course, along with the doubt solving, not just inside the class, but even after the class. Yes, this is something which is unheard of. Tell me how many people do this? Not many people. There are few people, but not many people do this. Doubt solving from morning till night. No matter which doubt you ask, that's it. It will be solved for all of you. And you also get the test series, my dear friends. Yes, you're going to get all the test series, which will also include discussion. So if you want to join the crash course, let me tell you, because you're attending my session and I'm taking so much effort, I am giving you 3000 rupees of usual discount. What is it? All the minions already know it is 2000 rupees discount. But today, special class. So 3000 rupees, 30% off on this crash course, which usually is 10,000 rupees. So come on, go ahead, use the coupon code and join the crash course right away. Let's do this. Certain test series is free uh, or crash course registered people. So Sakti, if you are already in the crash course, the test series is already a part of the crash course. Okay, so for those people who just want test series, there is a separate option. For those people who want test series plus doubt solving, plus sessions, plus motivational sessions, plus revision, then you have the crash course. Uh, scammer, yes, you should be allowed. That should not be a problem. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so, uh, Google, uh, the KTG formulas uh, will be, uh, it's already there in the playlist. So there are just formulas, Google Ra Rajaram. So there is a beautiful chart I have made. Just check the link of the extracts, Google. Take care. You can find it over there. Okay, Google, there is a beautiful formula sheet of all the KTG formulas which I have given. So just watch that. Okay, oh my God, Yalni, cool down, cool down. So transverse wave and longitudinal waves. Let's do this. Similar formulas for transverse wave, all right, the speed of the wave is root of t by mu, very important. t is tension, mu is mass divided by length, keep this in mind. But in longitudinal waves, for a solid, it is root of Young's modulus by rho. The speed for liquids is root of bulk modulus by rho and the speed for gas is root of gamma p by rho and it can be also written down as gamma rt by m okay very important next up okay the equation 
इन ट्रांसफर्स वेव इज ए साइन के एक्स प्लस माइनस ओमेगा टी बट इन लॉन्गिट्यूडनल वेव्स इट्स समथिंग लाइक दिस द एक्सेस प्रेशर इज पी एम साइन के एक्स प्लस और माइनस ओमेगा टी वॉट इज दिस ए इट्स द एम्पलीट्यूड वॉट इज दिस पी एम दिस इज मैक्स प्रेशर वेरिएशन मैक्स प्रेशर वेरिएशन Next up, when do you use plus and when do you use minus? That's common for both of them. So when you use plus, it's going in minus x-axis. Ulta, it's opposite. And when you use minus, it's moving in positive x-axis. Cool. One more thing, the velocity common for both of them. Velocity is always omega by k, and it is also f into lambda. One more thing that is common, omega is two pi f. And k is two pi divided by lambda. All important formulas. No, Harry Parker. Uh, well, I had my lunch, but I didn't have my dinner. I'm going to have my dinner only after I complete the session. And I feel that you, once you're confident, that's going to fill my stomach. I'm going to, yeah, do that after this. Yes. So, Yukta, Kolmuru. Well, let me tell you one thing. I have made a beautiful series on waves, entire chapter in detail. If you feel any of the topic, guys, if you are attending this session, let me tell you one thing: any topic, 11th standard or 12th standard, whichever topic you want in detail, I have made playlists. Go check it out. In fact, I can show it to you also. If you want, I will show it to you also. See, guys, you can watch it all here. Okay, over here. So if we go to We Enthuse. You will see playlists. So go to playlists and go down, and you will see the physics playlist. Look at this: every chapter, previous year papers, marathon sessions, flash series, uh, capacitors, mechanics, fluid mechanics, momentum, 1D, 2D, integration, derivatives, work power, energy, circular motion, RBD, electrostatics, gravitation, thermal physics, mechanical properties, waves, SHM, current electricity, optics, errors, modern physics, magnetism. Everything is there over here. Do you see that? Check out this playlist. So all you need to do is once you hit playlist, go to uh, math. Uh, sorry, physics over here. You can see that physics, J physics. Just hit on this link, and you will be getting that. I hope this makes sense. Okay, cool. Ah, <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Sivan. Yes, yes, Raghavendran. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, cool. Now, last few formulas. For transfers, we end this thing. Please remember when I talked about pressure amplitude, there is also another formula which is B K S M. This is pressure amplitude or max variation in the pressure. Okay, max variation in the pressure or pressure amplitude. This is displacement amplitude. Very very important formula. Displacement amplitude. The particles go back and forth. The maximum displacement of the particle. Next up, power. Average power, average power. Very important formula. Half mu v a square omega square. Very important formula for transverse wave. But here you have intensity. The intensity is given by half. Uh, uh, sorry, half p m square by rho v. Very important. Half p m square by rho v. That's intensity formula. Keep this in mind. Okay. Then. If you have noted this down, very very important. Thank God, Yalini. Yes, yes. Let's do this. Come on, minions. Come on, let's do this. Don't let the juice die out. Die out. Okay. So string fixed at both ends is same as a pipe which is closed at both ends. A string fixed at one end is same as a pipe. Which is closed at one end and open at the other, and a string which is free at both ends or fixed at none of the ends is same as a pipe which is open at both ends. And the formulas for both of them are similar. So for fixed at both ends, the formula is n v by 2 l. For fixed free or closed open, the formula is odd times v by 4 l. And when both ends are open or free, then the formula is n v by 2l. Keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. 
Hello, Mr. Perfect. Welcome. Yes. So this is very, very important. Remember this. Here you have all harmonics. Here also you have all harmonics, but here only odd harmonics. Keep this in mind. Very, very important. Only odd harmonics. Glad to know that. Yes, glad to know that. Okay. Now, remember one thing only for longitudinal waves. Whenever you have a pipe, which is either open at both ends or open at one end, the actual length differs from the effective length. If it is open at one end, do not forget that the length that you will effectively use is the original geometrical length plus 0.3 times of D. What is D? Diameter. And if it is open at both ends, then keep this in mind. It is L plus 0.6 into D. Both ends are open. And this is called as, what is this called as? This is called as end correction. Keep this in mind. What is this called as? This is called as end correction. Keep this in mind. Yes. Oh, yes, I know, Sakti. I have seen your memes. I have seen the memes that you have made on Instagram. And I know, I have been following that. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Yes. Cool. Okay. So I hope this is clear. And last few things. Last few things coming up. Doppler effect. So remember this formula for Doppler effect. Whenever source or observer moves, okay, whenever the source or the observer moves, the frequency heard by the observer is original frequency into a fraction. What is that fraction? Speed of sound by speed of sound, speed of detector by speed of source. Now, if you get confused, who is on the top, who is below? Remember, D is the alphabet which comes first. So on the numerator, D is first, S comes later on. Keep that in mind. Thank you, Keshav. Plus minus depends on whether the frequency is increasing or decreasing. If they are coming towards, frequency will increase. If they are going away with the relative to each other, then it will decrease. So choose your signs based on whether the frequency is increasing or decreasing. All right. Cool. Next up. Beats. When two frequencies of similar nature are sounded together, you will see the sound increases, decreases, increases, decreases. That is called as beats. The rate at which the sound increases, decreases, increases, decreases, that is called as beat frequency and it is the positive difference of higher minus lower frequency. Correct. Correct. Let's do this. Okay. So remember, all these formulas are important. Last topic. Last topic. Interference. If two waves come together, but they do not reach simultaneously, there is something called as the path difference. This part difference gives rise to phase difference. Their phases will be different. And that phase difference is given by 2 pi by lambda into delta x. Very important. And the resultant of both the waves has an amplitude given by a1 square plus a2 square vectors guys 2a1 a2 cos del phi cos del phi and this is the root of that that is the resultant amplitude okay thank you Sobia so much Madhya this is 11th standard revision for 2021 and 2022 batch so don't worry even if you have joined in late you can watch the replay and the power of the resultant is p1 plus p2 very different formula plus 2 root p1 p2 cos del phi this is power or intensity formula. Power or intensity. You can use for both. You can use for both. Okay. And remember one thing. When del phi is zero, that is called constructive interference. And when del phi is pi, it is called as destructive interference. In this situation, when it is constructive, it is said to be in phase. And when it is destructive, it is said to be out of phase. Cool. Yes. Know that, know that, uh, I mean, it depends. Like, see, it comes in light, all of this, but it is also there in sound. In J, there have been questions on interference on sound and transverse waves. That's why I'm doing it over here. Okay. 
Let's do the last few questions. Last two, three questions, guys. And then I'm going to run for my dinner. For you guys. Yes, thank you, Sivan. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the love. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Uday. All right, 1999 question. Let's see how many of you do this. Hmm. Come on, 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 come on. Think, 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 think. Come on, 1999 question. Let's do this. <clears throat> okay, the ratio of speed of sound in nitrogen to that of helium gas is at 300 Kelvin. Use formula. Gamma of nitrogen, gamma of helium. Remember the speed formula is root of gamma RT by M. Temperature is same, R is same. So molecular weight will be ulta. So molecular weight of nitrogen, molecular weight of helium. That's it. Now it's just about substitution. Gamma for nitrogen, diatomic, so 7 by 5. Gamma of helium, monoatomic, so 5 by 3. Uh, molecular weight of helium, well that's 4. And nitrogen, well that's 28. 4 goes with 28 as 7. This 7 goes with this 7. And I will have root of uh, 3 goes on the top by 5 multiplied by 5, which is root 3 by 5. So that should be this option C, correct. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Yes, so that I have done all the topics today. Yes, I have done all the topics. If I miss something, uh, maybe it is not intentional. I would have missed it because maybe it slipped through my mind. But most likely I have done almost all the topics. All right. And even if I miss something, do not forget to watch that in the replay. Okay, next and last few questions. This is a wave equation. And there is another wave going in the opposite direction. It produces no 2002 question. Then the equation of the unknown wave to produce that standing wave with a node at x equals to 0. Come on, let's see how many of you do this. N no, uh, maybe NVD it would have come in neat, but this is a J question for now. Okay, come on, come on, think about it, think about it. All right, all right, all right. Come on. Yes, I think last one question more, that's it, and we are done. Well, I'll tell you what, use the formulas, guys. Come on, 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 do this. Yes, just use the formula sin, oops, sin C plus sin D is. 2, oops, yes, 2 sine of C plus D by 2, cos of C minus D by 2. But sine of C minus sine of D is 2 cos C plus D by 2 into sine of C minus D by 2. Use this formula, you will see only one of them will give you the right answer. Yes, check this out. Think about it. Yes. And it is going to be B. Correcto. Very good. Very good. Very good. Excellent minions. Excellent. Well, aaj ka last question ke liye, are you guys ready? Here it is. And I hope you are going to share this video with your friends, with your relatives, with your cousins who are preparing for J. And each one of you who has attended this lecture, today's Guru Dakshina is you have to get at least 10 people to this channel, at least 10 people. Come on, that is something which you should do. At least you should post it, whether they come or not come, it's not up to you. That you should definitely spread. Yes, you should definitely spread the love, the joy of learning to your friends. Very good, Sobia, excellent, you should get it. That's the fees of attending today's class. That's a very expensive one. Yes, very good, very good, Anish Sivan, very good. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's do this. Very good, Yalni. Very good. And the answer is very clear, guys. Come on. I'll tell you what. This 100 is omega. This 20 is k. And speed is omega by k. So it is oops, 100 by 20. And believe me or not, this came in 2004. And this is just 5. That's it. That's the answer. 
don't have to be scared believe me these kind of questions do come in the examination do not forget to join our telegram group the link is in the description box below where you'll get the entire session pdf yes entire session pdf of today's class and all the other important updates notifications because we are going to discuss all the question papers on this channel of j mains and tomorrow 12 standard session do not forget that and join the test series using the coupon code shcc with the link given in the description box the test price is almost 100 rupees per test which is very reasonable and also do not forget you can join the crash course if you want more regular sessions doubts and all that for oops this is not 8000 this is supposed to be 7000 rupees 30 percent discount use the coupon code shcc it is not 8000 only for today this is the offer go join it now bye bye i hope you have loved this yeah love this session i hope you have already subscribed to our channel to get more updates and do not forget to smash that like button out there bye bye yes science free about a gift tomorrow's time seven o'clock every day Shreya sir is going to be there at seven o'clock that's how it is bye bye take care i'm going to run for my dinner Ta-da, 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 bye-bye guys, bye-bye minions, love you all.